penalty points and actually Dirk Schrader just manages to sneak ahead of Bubby by virtue of being dot on that optimum time at yesterday over David Evans's cross country course and uh, Felicity Collins, Lizzie Boff, uh, the young guns flying the British flag in the top 10, Gemma Stevens at Pippa Funnel and Tom Jackson rounding out things as they stand at the moment. But a little bit further on down the order and look at that. Uh, one pole covers uh, 11th through to 19th. It is unbelievably close. Die Body, the course designer for the show jumping here, will certainly have set a very strong test. So uh, lots to look forward to throughout the afternoon. And it is the most glorious day here at Blenheim and uh, really spine tingling as Laura Wright uh, played the national anthem, sung the national anthem for uh, the crowds here a few moments ago. Uh, sat alongside me, I am delighted to welcome back Alice Fox Pitt. Alice, it is good to have you with us. And we have got a brilliant afternoon of sport ahead of us. We really have. I mean, it's such an extraordinary setting, this, isn't it? As we sit pretty much on the lawn of the palace to see out the final stages of this incredible three-phase competition that has so much history and has such a great lineup as Georgie Goss, our first to jump, comes into the arena. And a real tough ask after such an emotional tribute to Her Majesty the Queen. And it feels very appropriate to be in such a historic venue at such a historic time in our, our nation's great history. And here, of course, the birthplace of Sir Winston Churchill, who was Her, Her Majesty's first Prime Minister. And we've said it throughout the week. But to be here feels very appropriate at this extraordinary time with the amazing pictures we're seeing beamed through from London as the nation mourns. But Georgie Goss for Lupe, lying in 17th place overnight, comes forward for the jumping phase. Georgie, who's uh, 34, just got married a few weeks ago and very strong in this phase, um, isn't she? She absolutely is. She's a really class jockey and uh, actually... She comes forward having had a very good dressage. 31.0 in the first phase was just outside the top 10. Uh, 5.2 time penalties yesterday over David Evans's cross-country track. And so a clear round here would see her guarantee a top 20 position. And actually the uh, show jumping running in reverse order of merit. We've got a couple of riders jumping out of order simply because of other commitments. We've got the four-star short cross-country going on. Ben King and Guess will be guiding you through that. But let's take a look at Die Body's track. 90 seconds is the time allowed. This is a horse with plenty of scope, and Georgie, you really want them just to feel that they can come off the fence. The um, change in the style and the shape of the canter, which is obvious, of course, when we see them galloping cross-country over the undulations, and some horses then can compress that canter, alter that balance, and start to get up in the air rather than travel across the fences really easily. Others find it much more challenging, and this horse looks like he's coping really well with the exertions of yesterday. And as you said, he he's jumping out of order, so in 17th place. So really looking to put the pressure on those top few, because it is so tight, just one fence between 19th and 11th. This has got plenty of scope, hasn't she's it? She's got bags and bags of scope. She's literally pinging. And the ground conditions in the main arena are actually absolutely brilliant. I'll be very interested to see the time yeah. of, of, because it doesn't feel like Georgie is really moving on. There's a lot of rollback turns. This is quite an interesting uh, rundown to that combination, actually. The two strides when I walked, oh. it came up quite short. And actually, we just found it there, the back rail going uh, on the second element for Georgie. That's, just, that's disappointing because I thought the related distance... She really came back on herself, and now she's just had an expensive second rail behind, which when you saw her jump the first part of the course and a third. Whoa, well, the first half of that round was absolutely immaculate, and you couldn't see her touching a rail, and then whether she got a little bit tired or... But the last three fences coming down, so it ends up as an expensive... 12 penalties for Georgie in well, a time of 87.52. Very comfortably inside the time, actually, which I'm a little bit surprised by, but 12 jumping, so she finishes the day on 48.2 and uh, drops down the leaderboard to 33rd as things stand at the moment. Next to come forward, it is the first of three rides for uh, Amy Penny, and she comes forward with uh, Gary Powers' PSH Catalyst by Ulysses, this 13-year-old mare. Gary Power of Power Sport Horses, Amy, the stable jockey uh, for them, and actually she's been getting a, a huge amount of experience. She's a very, very talented rider, very good at producing the young horses as well, but it's good to see her getting lots of rides at the higher levels too, and she's got three here this weekend and all went very well cross-country yesterday. 
For just a 22-year-old, she's got a very strong stable of horses, hasn't she? And really showing that she deserves it. It is a numbers game. If you're going to start to really keep coming and getting that experience, you need a few. And she's done very well at such a young age to build up such a good team of horses. And PSH Catalyst actually 44.4 in the dressage. She got very hot. Oh, that oxer just goes at seven. Got very hot in the dressage. Clear, but 19.6 at time penalties to she add doesn't look like she makes it easy does she Femi? because she makes up that ground and she's had that behind she had the oxer in front jesus little speed merchant she is she really really is actually i think amy's just got a little bit lost um she's got she's eliminated because she missed the a final whole... line um so actually, after that oxer, you turn round back left at the top of the arena and you've got two fences coming down the far side she of the, the arena. She missed the whole section of the course because when she jumped the triple bar, she went the wrong way. That is really frustrating for her. Amy Penny and a PSH Catalyst are um, eliminated, I'm afraid. Fortunately, not their day. So uh, that is really frustrating for them. And uh, we didn't hear the buzzer go to say she'd been eliminated, but unfortunately... That will be very expensive. Here is for Ireland, Mike Ryan with Carol and Tom Henry's Barner Hound at Cornhill. Clear jumping, 20 time penalties yesterday, 62.7 in 49th position coming forwards. Poor old Amy, I've not seen that very often. Um, I've had plenty of brain freezes in my life, but that is not a time when you want to have one. She'll be frustrated with herself. She'll get another opportunity to come in because, as we've said, she's got the three rides as Michael Ryan, 46, from County Cork, hugely experienced. This is his 24th start at the level and part of the Irish Olympic team that were fourth at London in 2012. And, of course, Eva Clark, who we've seen this weekend as well, another member of that team, produces a lot of young horses. Um, him and his wife have a really successful business with horses of all levels. In fact... Uh, Kazumu Tomoto, who's based with us, bought one of his very good horses that was second here last year um, from the Ryan team. Just trying to get the horse to get onto that right lead. first part of the double goes and actually when we were walking the course you can go on the forward six from the triple bar to the first element but then you've got to really shorten up for the uh, exit of the double and unfortunately he just paid the price these are the two fences that amy penny missed on her first ride and mike clears them so just uh, the one down for him and uh, michael uh, ryan 91.65 his time so he is uh, a second and a part second thereof over the time allowed of 90. So we're actually 0.8 time penalties for him. Uh, so here is uh, the next rider to come forward. This is Arthur Dufour. And interestingly, um, Mike Ryan, who has uh, had time penalties, because he has had time penalties, um, the ground jury who would assess the time after the first three combinations to go they can't make the time tighter. So they could choose to make it longer, which I don't actually think they'll do. I think, if anything, they would have made it tighter because Georgie Goss made it so easily. Um, but because Mike has been outside of the time allowed and got time penalties, they can't make it shorter. So Arthur Dufour has had one in the eight, nine-year-olds, a homebred that he's really excited about. But he brings forward <coughs> this horse, uh, who's owned by Dr. Sarah Proctor, Arco's lad. And... Uh, from Ellesmere, we've talked about his fantastic uh, support and linchpin, Logan, his wife, and his two boys who travel on the circuit with him. And he spent a lot of time based with Andrew Nicholson, um, Logan, who was based with us, actually, when she first came over from America. But I think Arthur really feels he's taken so much inspiration from the work ethic, the attention to detail, and the winning um, formula that Andrew has had over so many years. It's good to see him starting to build a team of horses that could see him start to trouble the selectors for that French team. And certainly with the way they've, the week they've had at the Worlds, they'll be looking at what talent's coming up underneath because it's been very frustrating for them as they head to a home games. 
and you can absolutely see this horse bred for the job by Arco, the show jumping sire that Nick Skelton rode at the Athens Olympics in 2004. And uh, Arthur did a really good job on him yesterday because he just went a little bit green and inexperienced on him at one point of the course. And he's put in a really nice round in the show jumping. And Arco, as you said, you know, he's such a wonderful jumper. You would 86.93, so comfortably inside the time. And you wouldn't necessarily say that he had the blood for an event horse, but actually uh, he looked to have a decent gallop on him yesterday. I'm um, not sure how the dam was bred, but I think there must be a bit of blood in the dam side. Yeah, and there's a couple of event horses by Arco. Um, interestingly, looking at, at how much Arthur was inside the time, I think the ground jury will be very frustrated that they can't actually make the time tighter. 90 seconds remains the uh, time allowed. Lauren Lillywhite next to come forward with Hassian. And uh, they had 20 penalties jumping yesterday, but actually come forward on 83.6. So 34 years old. And interestingly... This horse, is, it's his first four-star long, um, and he's partially blind in one eye. But it's amazing how horses cope. Oh, damn, that first part of the travel goes. Amazing how horses cope very well. Um, I've seen a number of horses over the years that have lost a sight or lost one eye and still continue to enjoy their work and manage it. That's the second rail falls. Um, with the water tray going. This is interesting part of the course, actually. Die Body has really asked competitors to turn back on themselves and actually... She loves a switchback die, doesn't she? It challenges the riders to keep moving through that turn, to use their eye, to keep looking where they're going, to draw the horses round. Um, she then combines that with these open distances where you've got to decide, are you going to sit up and hold or are you going to make up the distance? So I think most riders will add because the time isn't tight. And obviously, as you flagged up, they're going into that tight combination where they're going to have to come back on themselves to get that upright coming out. But you are I think you're right. They'll be frustrated they haven't been able to tighten this time up because it's the time often speed causes the mistakes. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. It really does. Eight jumping penalties there for uh, Lauren Lillywhite and uh, Hassian as they uh, go on to complete and actually comfortably, very, very comfortably inside the time. She was uh, over five seconds inside the time. So uh, it will be 91.6, the score that Lauren completes on. As uh, next to come forward, it is Tom Grant with the Penhills Optimax. This is a 10-year-old by Pacino. 57.6, his score coming forwards in 44th place. And unfortunately... Um, rather going straight through the second just to, unfortunately and will they count that as having jumped it or, well yeah. it's interesting isn't it because actually i think tom has taken that he has jumped it and oh, he tom. did get from one side of the fence to the other oh, tom. Um, but unfortunately it's all very difficult to come back from a, a, a moment such as that i'd like just to see him come on send him now on round that turn get that canter forward Stop thinking backwards. You don't have to look pretty. You need to send him, send him. You need to get him moving there and then take him back and think of adding through the turn. But Tom now just he needs to get that leg on and make it happen because you've got to salvage a situation now where the horse is going to come out because he's got scope, he's got ability, and it's now about the rider wrapping his leg around him and saying, come on, I've got you here. You know what you're doing. We've got this. But if Tom goes cautious, that's not going to help this situation. That's better. Can't. Now, when you land, use that ground through this turn to move the horse up and get that forward energy into the canter. Just Tom looks a little bit like he's a, a bit overwhelmed with the situation. and Now he's starting to move it forward. And the horse is a really careful jumper. Yeah, he's he? really trying, really isn't he? really careful jumper. And actually wants to leave the fences up. And I, I think, oh. unfortunately, just went a little bit green after that early problem. And... Uh, will be oh and unfortunately a very similar problem at the last um so uh, tom grant penhills optimax are not having the most straightforward of show jumping rounds and uh, they'll pick up plenty of time penalties as well so uh, it's a real shame because tom's got a great head on him and he's a very talented rider but uh, it just felt like the whole thing started the wrong way and then and then couldn't really get it back um, he's not got a lot of experiences at this level, and the, it's the horse's first start at this level. But um, 
That is a frustrating way to finish your Blenheim experience. It is four fences down, 4.4 times. He finishes on 78.0, which drops him 10 places on the leaderboard. So uh, next to come forward, it is Sasha Hargreaves and her own and Bill and Alison Hargreaves, 12-year-old Woodlands Be Daring by Billy Be Cool, who we know is an excellent show jumper. 143. 60th place. Um, so we're starting to starting to get to move on up, but in 60th place, Sasha, another young rider trying to make her mark, just 22 years old. It's her first four-star long here today, so this weekend. So this is a big moment for her as she starts to um, try and get that feeling of moving up. It's both hers and the horse's first time at this level. And uh, she owns this horse with her parents. And a big moment for her coming into this arena. And you work and work and work and you're always thinking, will I get to Blenheim? Can I get to Blenheim? All through her career she'll have been thinking that. And this is a big moment because hopefully it springboards her into having got one under her belt, then thinking, can I come back and be competitive? Where will she build on that? Go on to Bramham next season. Um, build on what she's achieved this weekend. This is a nice round so far. Yeah, so far, so good. And um, we've just had the one faultless round over Die Body Show Jumping Tracks so far. So far. For Sasha Hargreaves, it is all going very well. And could be too. She's riding yeah. this beautifully. Yeah, isn't she? Yes, we've seen that cause its problems. We've seen that cause its problems. Um, uh, but nice combination of being forward, but just taking the time to balance and add where she needs. Because he's a big horse, isn't he? But he's nimble, and that's a super clear round. Yeah, it absolutely is. And a completion at your first Blenheim is still very exciting. Point four of a time penalty to add for them, and they will finish on 143.8. So uh, Sasha Hargreaves, Woodlands Be Daring, finish their first uh, four-star long. Just the one clear round so far. As next to come forward, it is uh, Alex Bragg. Alex with Ardeo Premier on a total penalty score of 127.2. Alex, who had that really tricky combination up at the A.W. Jenkinson fence at 18 yesterday, where he absolutely made the save of the day. I saw him this morning. I said, Alex, I think... Um, we watched that back in slow-mo a good few times, and he said, don't worry, I've seen it go viral on social media. So uh, he was reminded of his epic save, but unfortunately he did cross his tracks a couple of times and wasn't able to uh, get away penalty-free. But this is a really smart horse, and one he thinks a massive amount of for the future. was actually fourth, as the first part of the treble combination goes. Fourth as a young horse in the Lyon d'Angers at the seven-year-old Young Horse World Championships a couple of years ago. Nine-year-old now by Hold Up Premier. Owned by Debbie and Neil Nuttall. Just had a little look at that tray, didn't he? He did, and he just backed off it slightly, and he got away with a hairy moment there. And Alex, you could just see him, gave him a tap down the shoulder. Careful there. Um, so far, just that one down as he comes around. You can see why he rates the horse, and he was obviously very precocious. Sometimes, though, when you, you get horses that are being competitive of, at Leon, it just takes them a little bit of time to consolidate that form. It's quite an experience. Some horses take it and move on. Some horses take it and it slightly leaves them a bit wide-eyed. Clever striding in the in the middle part of the double because the horse really backed himself off. The first uh, part of it had gone. So two down so far for Alex Bragg as he comes to the final fence. Ardeo Premier will see him with Quindiva a little bit later on. Well, this will be... This will be the weekend that he doesn't mind having two down. He was in 59th going into this and for a very competitive guy. It hasn't quite gone his way this weekend, but uh, that horse, I'm sure, will have his day. And um, the Nuttall family have got a lovely, lovely horse on their hands. Yes, it hasn't quite gone to plan this weekend, but I'm sure we'll see him in the spring. He will have learned a lot yeah. this weekend. And actually, when you've got a young horse and they go away from a big competition having learned a lot... Don't get me wrong, it's frustrating, but actually you feel how worthwhile it has been. <laughs> so here is the first of three rides for Wills Oakden, and uh, he comes forward with a class coolie, 69.3, their starting score. Yeah, an annoying 20 yesterday for Wills. Busy day, busy weekend for him, riding three, round a four-star long. is a is a real physical and psychological challenge as he just has the back rail down coming out of the treble. Um, 
both for organizing your logistics, your staff, the welfare of the horses, of course, paramount, making sure that you get one done properly, that you really think about what the individual horse needs. Is there a different route you want to go on different horses? Um, having time to actually eat, remember to drink, certainly. <laughs> it's, it, it's really challenging. It was interesting talking to Tim Price about it. Um, in the end at Burley, he decided just to run the two, but um, just getting into that mindset of what you've got to do when you're going riding multiple horses around these big competitions it's very very challenging and fitness fitness wise um but good fun i love how you left sleep off the list Alice. <laughs> i mean who needs sleep it's fine <laughs> wills is such a competitor though and he's very used to being very busy he'd have a lot of horses at the one days and he's got a really good team of, of people behind him and just coming to the last with one rail down pops the final fence and uh, it has been a good completion at the level for Nicely a class Cooley. The time. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, so often we see this with the time that the good guys make it look like time's far too easy. And yet we've seen plenty of horses get time faults. Um, he, he would be a great example of somebody that could go in and, and really put in a very, very strong uh, time. And it's interesting when you go to the four star shorts, um, you quite often end up with multiple riders riding their first horses first and they go in and they ride it and make the time look really easy so that the ground jury go, oh, okay, well, we'll, you know, tighten the time up. But of course, it's not easy for everyone else. It's only easy for them. <laughs> Next to come forward, it is Kimmy Sassir and uh, Landmarks Monaco. Kimmy, in her first plenum, rides for owner Jacqueline Mars, who has been a huge supporter of our sport, 103.4 their two-phase score coming forward to this 15-year-old by Formula One. Yeah, she was a uh, work rider for Lauren Kiefer eventing. Um, Lauren, of course, one of the great U.S. riders. Damn, that first part of the treble goes down. But um, she's been trying to plan to come over to the U.K. for a while, and then um, COVID hit, and then it was a bit touch-and-go last year as to whether this event would run or not. Um, and Mrs. Miles just said, look, hang fire. Um she was supported by the US Federation to come over and they thought hang fire let's look at next year when we know we'll be able to have a proper build up and be able to come over so she's been very patient about this very frustrated with you know the COVID and the lack of competitions um, she was going to come down and be based with us and uh, then we all said no look you're not going to make the most out of your trip if you come this year where we've got a bit of a stagnated uh, program because of COVID and she's um She's loved the experience this, this week. And what a cool little horse. Really trying to leave the poles up. And actually really interesting because he likes to carry his head quite high. But obviously that's just the way he likes to go. And isn't they haven't got a martingale on him or anything like that. They just let him go in his way of going. And uh, 82.62 miles inside the absolutely time. Absolutely miles inside. Uh, so, Kimberly Sasir, just the one pole down. And that will see her go on 107.4. So just a reminder that if you are just tuning in here, uh, we have got a withdrawal. So next to come forward would have been Ballon Train Incentive and Kaiser Mansby Svedberg. They have withdrawn. So this is Nicole Mills and Fearless W, also owned by Nicole herself, a 12-year-old by Aztika VDL, 80.8. .8, their score coming into this final show jumping phase. Alice Fox Pitt sat alongside me. Hello. And uh, it is such an exciting afternoon ahead of us because uh, a real climax to the competition. Ooh. With a lucky rub at the first element there. Yeah, living up in Stanford just by Burley. Relatively inexperienced at the level. Just had a couple of starts at four star long. Doing a good job here, but very ambitious rider. Been competing in British eventing for over 20 years. And she always sits on a beautiful stamp of a horse. She's got some really nice young horses coming through. Casewick Stud, where she's based. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen Nicole on a horse that I haven't thought, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she's got a great system, hasn't she, of just finding these young horses and producing them. But good to see her actually keeping hold of one and getting to ride it at the levels, because quite often her business model is around selling them. But she's kept hold of this one. Owned by um, Josie Smales. No, hang on, that's not right. Owned by Nicole. Owned by Nicole, sorry. Owned by Nicole. Josie owns her own one. She's definitely thinking she's moving up to that. 
Lovely round. Really nicely done. Nicole Mills and a fearless W. She'll have been picking up. Uh, she won't pick up any time penalties well inside, some eight and a half seconds inside. And uh, that gives us a clear round. So she finishes on 80.8. She'll be frustrated with uh, a 20 penalty she picked up going into the first late crossing yesterday. But actually, I think she'll have watched it back and, and feel very much that it was a small, small mistake, just wasn't quite on her line. And, and there is so much from her weekend to look forward to. Here is Bill Levitt from One Australia. of my all-time favourites. Oh, we all love Bill. Got to love a Bill, haven't you? Rebecca Purdell's Loxley's last stand, 59. 9.6 his score coming forward with this 13 year old he's and amazing Bill I mean he is amazing 59 now course, representing Australia very fairly local to here um, very professional brilliant outfit fantastically supported by his wife and his kids now riding as well and I think I saw actually that um, wife Jenny is currently somewhere over in Europe with daughter Ursi vaulting. Yeah, the vaulting. They're multitasking to the absolute max. They always do. They always do. Um, Rebecca Purdle owns this horse and Bill, who has some incredibly loyal owners, um, who really, he makes it so much fun for them. And he just loves it. I mean, you know, he just loves the game. I think a couple of times people have gone, you know, how much longer what are you doing? And at the moment, you know, he's got horses to compete at this level and he's really enjoying it. Just found that distance a little bit tight in the combination. And you flagged that up before when you walked the course, that that, that striding from the related distance to the combination was going to be a challenge. You sort of need to move up going into the combination, but actually, and the last goes well, and he just checks back over his shoulder. He'll be frustrated with those two down, uh, Bill Levitt, comfortably inside the time, and he actually has a really good chance in the eight and nine-year-old class a little bit later on. Uh, he finishes here 67.6, but uh, Bill Levitt and uh, Rebecca Purdell's Loxley's last stand. Two down to add. Now it is number 81. This is Fabrice Saint-Marie with César de Wain. 77.2, his score coming forwards. 77.2 includes just one problem in the cross country yesterday and a few time penalties as well. 20 jumping, 22.8 time. Fabrice, who was that fast phase with this horse, really caught my eye in the dressage on yeah, Friday. Yeah, you were wowed by him, weren't you? You loved this one. What caught your eye? Well... I would say I'm a sucker for a grey, um, <laughs> but he's just a gorgeous stamp of a horse. Big moving, flashy, has a, a great expression, a great work ethic, and uh, certainly so far so good in the jumping. I'm amazed that this is Fabrice's first time at the level. That can't be right. Is that right? Um, both him and the horse, first time um, doing a four-star long, because Fabrice seems to have been around long time but I think in France they have a very good program of young horse classes and perhaps that's where he's been focusing his attention but very positive really making it happen up to the oxer he's cute isn't he because he's a massive he's, he's huge massive. Horse. and he's very very um, careful he, yeah, he so wants neat. to leave them up found that six quite short up there but actually beautiful through the combination he's really nimble isn't he he's lovely and neat this combination actually won Le Pain oh, uh -huh, in um, August the three star in preparation for here at Blenheim and a lovely clear round by them and that's always a super super competitive class in Herada Pan there's a lot of horses that go out there a lot of riders from outside of France as well he's comfortably inside the time so Cesar de Wart and Fabrice Saint-Marie Brilliant performance from them, and they finish on that two-phase score, 77.2. Well, if you're just tuning in, uh, then a very warm welcome to you. We've got a couple of combinations jumping out of order in the first, uh, in the final phase. Uh, Georgie Goss, 48.2, is the clubhouse leader, but uh, still a little way to go to get to anybody that could challenge to go ahead of her. Next to come forward to jump. It is uh, number 52, Jamie Kellock, with uh, her own uh, summer bait, 71.2, her two-phase score. And uh, so made the big trip to Canada. And this is an event that a lot of 
the US North American based riders um, target, Valerie, who we'll see later on, um, made the big trip over. I think they really feel that it's a, a great first exposure to international top class eventing over the water. And it's a really good sort of touch point to know where am I at. It's a great event to aim at and it's it gives you a real feel of what you're at. But this is it's a massive thing to fly your horse from Canada to um, really take on the best of the best in a setting that has that wow factor that you've got to get past and actually just focus on you and your performance. Um, and this has been an absolute dream of Jamie's to compete overseas since she first started eventing at 13 years old and exposing, she says, exposing myself to competition overseas, competing against the best riders in the world is a crucial step in my education and development as a rider. And her aspiration, of course, is to represent Canada on a championship Olympic team in the future. And this, her first real test to see, has she got it? Has she got it? Can she really step up to those championship teams? And a frustrating rail there. Yeah, and do you know what? She had a super clear round in the cross-country over David Evans' cross-country course yesterday. And I think both horse and rider will have learned so much from their first Blenheim experience. And it's been a, a pretty good finish to it as well. She uh, will be frustrated to have added the, the four jumping, and she's going to add 1.2 time as well, because 0.4 of a penalty for every second or part second thereof over the time allowed uh, is uh, added. And so 1.2 time. For but well Jamie done to her. Well. Bucket Very good. list. Bucket list, onwards tick and off. upwards. Yeah. Uh, 76.4 is her total score. Now it is number 72, Brian Morrison with Marie Symington's a global mentor. 66.2, their score coming forwards. Brian of Global Sport Horses. And uh, good to see him over here at Blenheim. And good to see him with a horse up the levels as well. This horse jumped clear in the cross country yesterday as the fast goes, unfortunately. Always feels like a very long way round when the first goes. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? You sort of either think, right, that's the rub he should have had outside. Hopefully it'll make him careful. Or, shucks, yes, this is going to be a, a long really way. Long way. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Tried really hard over the final part of that combination, but unfortunately... Really reaching for the back rail, though. You'd hope that he would have had a bit more scope coming out of there. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, jumping on the final day of a, a long format, particularly at this level, is so difficult because they've actually, they, you know, this horse was out on the cross country for about 11 and a half minutes yesterday. And it's a real stamina test and the legs are just that little bit more weary. There is a little bit of lead in them and uh, just that little bit harder. Marie, Marie Symington, who uh, owns this horse. And the global brand is becoming bigger and bigger a lot of people going to look at horses there. Uh, lots of horses on the market. Um, and really trying to start to compete with the Cooley team. The back rail of the triple bar bounced. I think it stayed. But it, it landed back in the cups. Just finding the width of these fences a little bit challenging. Isn't he? He's just looking like he's reaching for those back rails a little bit. And again, like you said, maybe he's a bit tired from yesterday. But definitely looks happier at the uprights. Well, Brian Morrison and a global mentor have completed and a time penalty as well for them. So uh, two down and a time penalty uh, gives them 8.4 to add 74.6, their total score. Now, uh, just Hello. saluting our ground jury, it is number 33, Imo Brook with Robert and Emma Brooks at San Solo. Combination who uh, were very good yesterday over the thrills and spills of david evans's cross-country track just picked up some time penalties clear jumping 21.6 time so actually this is a, an important uh, minimum eligibility requirement run for them getting really valuable experience and he's a pretty cool jumper as well yeah massive you see this often at blenheim um 21 year old having her first run at the level um wow he's got he's got a real ping hasn't he 21 years young, and uh, the horse is 13. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little bit unorthodox in his jumping style, but he absolutely en enthusiastic I'm to the max. I think who he reminds me of, um, Nicola Wilson's Opposition horse. Buzz. Opposition Buzz. He rather reminds me of that, because he just goes really high, a little bit inverted, but hey, who cares, as my mum used to say. 
get over them any which way how I have to admit, I absolutely love this horse in the jumping phases because he's a, a real athlete. Have um, you seen him before? I have. I fell a little bit in love with him at Bramham earlier this summer. And uh, it may just add it in there. It's an interesting upright, that, because actually it's a jockey club vertical. And as I was walking the course, it felt smaller than a, a number of the other fences. And I think it's just the way it's positioned on the ground. But actually, it's jumped really well this morning. Look at his face. He's really true. And, you know, you wouldn't imagine that he could come back on himself like that. But in that double, he's really got a conscience, this boy. That's such a good way to describe it. And he just has the last to go. But double clear around your first Blenheim really would be something to be very, very proud of. Imo Brooks and Solo will be very pleased with that. One time, faults. Can't but believe he had that. Point four touch. He did add it in a couple of places yeah. and he takes a little bit of setting up, but 66.3 left all of the fences up and uh, she will finish inside at the top. Uh, well, that 50. Was big weekend for her. Well done her age, just 21 years old. A start of, I'm sure, a long and successful career. And what a great partner to have in San Solo. They look like a real good team and uh, exciting times ahead for them really exciting times next to, to come forwards it is uh, number 29 Althea Bleakman with her own uh, grand cord on a score of 60 clear jumping just a few time penalties cross country well, what can we say about Althea now 30 years old representing the Netherlands based down in Devon in Columpton at the family stud comes from such an extraordinary amazing line of successful riders Clessie her mum a complete legend of the sport and uh, she's come from a real background of riding young horses any horse that turns up she will be, she'll sit on she's done the youth program representing Holland and uh, her and her sister both very very talented riders sponsored by Antares Spillers Silver Feet Quartermarks you know, she really focuses on giving her sponsors um, what they would expect. She's got great social media presence and really understands that if brands want to be part of your team, you've got to understand what they want from you. And she works really hard at that. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, it's such an important component uh, of today's world and social media is such a valuable tool. But actually, it's pretty hard work as well. Um, you know, and, and riders work really, really hard in order to, to showcase themselves as good as they can. And uh, Althea just sat the horse back on his hocks coming round that corner. Nicely through the combination. It was good there, wasn't he? Neat. So coming to the final two, Althea Bleakman, Grand Cord. And uh, just the final upright to go. Pops it neatly and through the finish. Uh, big pats for Grand Cord. Uh, oh, just that pesky time fault as well. weird? Point four, We've point seen four. horses nearly nine seconds inside the time. You can't believe that someone as experienced as that could get a time fault. 64.4 finishes in 46 this thing's down at the moment. It's interesting though because actually the time isn't tight. You maybe think you've got more time yeah. than you have. Like yeah. you're not actually worried yeah. about the time and, and frustrating. Yeah. But anyway, point four for Althea Bleakman. Now it is uh, Sam Gillespie, number 63 with the 11-year-old mare but not till now. 50. 8.6 at their score coming forward. Clear over David Evans' track yesterday. Just time faults to add. And Sam, Sam. looking for, uh, I think, first uh, completion at the level. In fact, first, first start, I think. Yeah, it's his first start. So he's looking for a first start, first completion. Yeah, just go. 26, space down the road in Cheltenham. Another one looking for his. First completion uh, on his first attempt at the level. Um, he trains extensively with Lawrence Hunt, Paul Davis, and but not till now, an 11-year-old mare um, owned by Sam himself. Looks really tidy. Really tidy so far. Dragon Oxford is uh, pretty big and square. It's just taking quite a nice long turn back to that jockey club upright. You can't, you can't underestimate what a big moment it is in a rider's career 
to get that four star long under your belt. You're notching up experience, but you're notching up up the levels. You're starting to get to the first part of the combination. Stuff. Go then. Just I'd wonder if you might. I would say no, but you are much more observant than me. Well, I will. I will take it that he didn't. I hope um, not, because this is cool. Oh, oh, the last goes, and a little shake of the head for him. Uh, Sam Gillespie, but not till now. Time penalty as well, so 0.4 time, and it was just the last to go. So 4.4 in total, finishes on 63.0. He'll get a top 45 finish. So uh, the show jumping track certainly uh, causing a bit of movement on the leaderboard as things stand. The time is pretty achievable, but we're still seeing uh, one or two picking up time penalties in this phase. Alice Fox Pitt sat alongside me as we head through the reverse order show jumping. The top 23 will be coming forward after the lunch break at 20 to 3. Now it is the turn of Mary Edmondson, number 86, with Joy Soares at Lionel the second, 10 year old by Silver Baron, 58.2 her score coming forwards. So Mary Edmondson coming forward from Wood Woodbridge in the UK. <coughs> and good double clear at Hartbury CCI in August before coming on to here. And that experience would have set them up well for this. Well done through that treble. The first part of that has been a real challenge. Seems to have caught out a few people. Die so clever with her track because... She encourages riders to be forward, but they've got to remain balanced. They've got to keep moving through the turns. But then, of course, be a little bit cautious with that related distance down to the double. But the problems on the course have come all around. No one specific bogey fence. Joy saw great supporter of Mary's, um, owns this horse. And, oh, fortunately that goes behind. And the jockey club... Have I've really bought the ethos that they have in racing in terms of looking after the owners um, and really valuing the incredible part that they play in this sport. In fact, there wouldn't be a sport without the owners. So uh, a facility specifically for owners and riders just on the corner of the arena there, something that you know you only really see at events like Ark and on the continent. And there's another rail goes for Mary. And... Uh, I think the owner's very grateful and really enjoying the experience here. 91.8, so two time to add as well as the two fences down. So a little bit frustrating for Mary. 67.0, so that will drop her a few places on the leaderboard. A couple of places uh, and uh, she finishes the weekend on 67.0. Does get what that all-important minimum eligibility requirement, though, an MER results to her name. As uh, next uh, to come forwards, it will be another ride for Amy Penny, number one, with Gary Powers, PSH Encore, 55.1, the score that Amy brings forward, this 10-year-old mare by PSH Overture. Amy, who uh, has three rides here this weekend, three brilliant uh, cross-country rounds, and actually didn't have the... Uh, Show jumping round on her first horse that she would have wanted. An error, of course, meant, uh, unfortunately, elimination for her. So, uh, yeah, that was Dotty, wasn't it? But I that's another go here. I actually think we'll we'll see it in just a moment. But I actually think it was the uh, oh the back rail of the combination goes. And uh, I actually think it was the jockey club vertical it, that she might have missed. You come away from the dragons uh, parallel. I think she just turned right straight away. Um, but she was our pathfinder yesterday, um, and did a great job there. All the riders in the tent due to go later watching her very, very carefully. I think this might have been the part that actually she just swung right straight away and missed a fence and she jumped around the next line Good and then the ground I jury. Think that's exactly what happened, wasn't it? Because she turned right, came round here yep. and missed that up front. But it is such a learning curve, isn't it? You know, and, and at the end of the day, it's so frustrating, but she won't be the first and she definitely won't be the last. No, absolutely not. Oh, um, 
just totally caught the wing. I think the, the, the horse was going to have the rail anyway, um, but she just caught the wing, just jumped out to the left slightly there. Almost anticipated the way he was going um, and had that down. But tough to have had the experience you had before of going wrong and then having to regroup, get yourself together and get on the next two. Um, but she's done that well. Frustrating to have that rail and goes into a time fault as well. So... Yeah. 8.4 penalties, uh, two rails and a point four for a time penalty sees her on 63.5 as Dye's a finishing marching score. across there to rebuild the fence. That is Die Body, the lady <laughs> uh, in front. And, mm. and it's such an important one, isn't it? You know, Die Body has built some of the biggest show jumping tracks, not only in eventing, but in pure show jumping as well. She's been hugely um, influential in, in the British show jumping team and everything actually on the final day building here is a very different ask to what you would do in a pure show jumping competition and she's really got to make a judgment call on the day before's cross country test as well yeah but she is such a wily old fox type she, I mean, she, <laughs> she really is. is when when the riders see that she's designing you know you got to bring your a game to the arena whether you're a pure jumper whether you're an eventer uh she knows exactly what she does which is so brilliant is she's she gives the horses confidence but she challenges the riders and it, they're always tracks that the riders have to think about the riders have to ride there's nothing given for free uh, no quarter given by die and but it but when you get them right they're great fun courses to ride and uh, she'll be a little bit annoyed about that time i think i think she would have liked to see that time a bit tighter just to challenge the lines that and the distances that the riders are, t are choosing to take but that said you know, we are getting plenty of time faults, um, even though we've seen some, you know, nearly 10 seconds inside. So it's a funny one. It's interesting, isn't it? You see some some of the, the biggest names in the sport, they make it look so straightforward. And actually, it, it really isn't always as they might make it seem. So uh, just if you're tuning in here for the very first time, then welcome to Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, the final day of competition here. The clubhouse leader is uh, Georgie Goss, and for loop for owners, Nikki Cooper, Suzanne Doggett and Lucy Fleming, 48.2 is the top score. But these are the leading combinations coming forwards uh, later on this afternoon in reverse order of merit. Marlin Hansen Hot Top, our dressage leader, Carlitos Quidditch K, 24.6. And actually, the winner of this class in the last 10 years has always come out of the top five. Can I ask you a quick question you looking can. at that and how tight it is? Who do you think is going to be the biggest climber? I think Felicity Collins, RSH Contendor. But I actually think that there's a lot of very good jumpers inside that top 10. Um, very good jumpers. Carlitos Quidditch K is a good jumper. Uh, Coraway is a superb show jumper. Um, RSH Contendor on Echo Ratings numbers is one of the best jumpers in the field. The Exclusive is a good jumper. Flash Cooley is one in the Hickstead Arena. So, you know, there's some very good jumpers. Um, sometimes you look at a top 10 and you think, well, actually, we could throw them up and we could just see how they land. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but actually, with this one, I think people are going to be made to work for it. And the pressure's going to be on, though, which actually always... Can I quickly ask you as well, can you give us an update as to what's happening in the World Games, or is that a bit Carnage tricky? Carnage in the show jumping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is. And it is tight. So just an update from Protonia. Of course, the show jumping is underway. And as you all know, if you were following yesterday, it is very, very tight. Great Britain sits in bronze. Germany sits in gold. The USA in silver. The, the German, uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be very tough in the final um, show jumping phase. The next rotation of team riders, so they're into the top 25, and the third counting scores are all starting to jump relatively soon. So if you're going to watch the World Games, though, just have ours on your second screen. No, and we'll no, keep watch you us and we'll, we'll keep you updated <laughs> for the World Games. Don't worry, but it's all to play for. That's what we'd say. Now we welcome uh, in to the arena. Our latest starter, this is... Stephanie Stamshrow. Stephanie Stamshrow. I think jumping a little bit out of order, interestingly enough. Um, Stephanie, number 47, with Master Swatch for Paula Stamshrow. It was the green jacket that gave it away. Well, well, that's what we're um, here. But Claire Lewis, Josie Smales, not having presented in the jumping phase as yet. I hope we're right, but I think we are with I the Irish jacket. So, number 47, Master Swatch. Just had a little stumble there. Coming on the turn back. Love this horse. A little strong in his front, strong in his neck. Not sure, we'll get you the news as to why she's jumped. 
Joe Icey is jumping out of order as soon as we can. From County Meath, um, this is her first experience at the Four Star Long again. We've talked about this. And um, her mum, Paula, owns this horse. Such an amazing opportunity for these young riders to get this Four Star career underway in the most extraordinary and historic surroundings at an event as prestigious as this. Life goals. Oh, bless you. Bless me. Sorry, I was just <laughs> sneezing for a second. Uh, Stephanie Stamshaw, comfortably inside the time, so she will be absolutely delighted to debut at the level. Oh. And uh, lots uh, to uh, look Real forward to. Real polished performance, that, wasn't it? Yeah, a couple down, and uh, I think com time is okay. But uh, now coming forward is number... No. Mm. I was going to say this is number 79. I think this is Claire Lewis and Kumro Calver. We're going back out of order. I'm trying desperately to get into the number on their number plate. Uh, their number plate. <laughs> Saddle cloth. My eyesight is not good enough. Um, I think it I'm is sure Kumro Calvo sure and Claire Lewis. Lewis. I think it is. 57.2 their score coming forward. Number 79. Oh, and the first really does go behind. It's happened a few times, doesn't it? And the second. Oh, no. Terrible start for her. I know it sounds ridiculous, but when a horse starts to go to the loo as you start your show jumping, it's like your worst nightmare because they can just close down behind and <clears throat> think more about what's going on behind them than in front. But that's three, four, and nearly five. But four down so far, four clear, and we're not halfway. Let's see. Come on, lad. Try and just we could have done with getting getting that canter a bit more organised as she came to the water tray, but she's cleared that over the wall. Lucky there. He's just going a bit by Braille at this stage as he jumps number seven and comes round back to number eight, the Jockey Club upright. She's taking a big wide turn to that. You'd say she needs to just up the tempo for the time, although, Nicole, you flagged up earlier that this time is extremely gettable. That's almost lulled the riders into a little bit of a full sense of security. But having had four down early, he sort of started to get a grip of himself. Actually pick up and jump. And it's defi difficult, isn't it? Because horses actually can just uh, lose a little bit of confidence and the last goes, the as, last well. goes as well and uh, a quick look at the screen for the clock there's going to mm. be a good few time penalties to add in there as well so uh, unfortunately an expensive show jumping round isn't that mad that's 16 seconds slower than other horses we've seen go around that track it is i actually this is matt heath mm -hmm. coming forwards with Ascari for owner Plum Rowland. I love this horse. Love his big white face. Really stands out. Matt always has a big smile on his face. We've had him here in the commentary box this weekend. And actually we owe uh, Josie Smales an apology because it was Josie Smales. I was looking desperately at the number on that number plate and I couldn't for the life of me see it. But unfortunately that was Josie Smales and Ars Vivea. So haven't seen Claire Lewis. Not sure if perhaps has withdrawn, but unfortunately... Um, well, sorry to Claire and sorry to Josie. Ex absolutely. Well, Josie has completed her first plenum. And uh, here is Matt Heath with Plum Rowland's Ascari. The sheepskin noseband is uh, something that we just sometimes see in horse just flicks his head about. And it's to help encourage him to keep his nose down to look where he's going. Yeah, we see them in racing quite a lot. And um, that idea of the horses dropping their head to see over the top and then hopefully get them to bring that front end up a bit more. And you can see that he is a little bit tricky in the mouth. But it worked pretty well. It was super snappy at the water tray. Matt, who loves Blenheim. It's been a local iconic event for him throughout his life, having been brought up at Banbury. His dad, Trevor, was the head lad at Paul Weber's racing yard just down the road at Cropredy. And 
Matt, he's a real all-round horseman. He's show jumped to a high level. He started off very young riding out the racehorses. And uh, now with a family of his own on the circuit and a real lovely bunch of owners who are helping him support a team with a lot of strength and depth. Yeah, and he's had some really good runs at the five-star level, and it's nice to see him getting a few horses the last goes, unfortunately. Uh, getting a few horses um, coming up the level, so two down, eight jumping, no time to add for uh, Matt Heath and Ascari, but uh, he is safely home. 59.1, his score on the board. So uh, eight to add for him. This show jumping is proving challenging. We are going to really see some changes I'm sure in the top order because um, nobody is finding this straightforward as into the arena comes uh, Valerie Valerie Viscarondo Pride and uh, we've had the absolute pleasure of hosting Valerie in her build up to this great competition and what an absolute credit she is to the sport and to her country, she has been a total joy, she came over here um, with a big plan to ride here at Blenheim. She's an extremely experienced horse lady. She has a very successful business in the US, but she decided to leave that, spend six weeks training with William, getting into his program, and um, bringing this lovely boy over. She fitted in a spot of uh, judging as the first part of the combination goes at Blair Castle as part of the ground jury as well, didn't she? She did. She was... Um, that was a shame that he just got in a muddle through that treble. Uh, she was she was on the ground jury judging. She's a very experienced um, judge and really enjoyed that experience. Uh, he's got his mojo back again now. This is a horse she absolutely treasures. He actually has a teddy unicorn as his emotional support in his <laughs> um, in his stable. And uh, our Shetland Sir James has been also helping nanny him and keep him happy and calm. It's a real shame that that tr treble fell to pieces because the rest of the round at the moment is looking really good. She'll be cross with herself about that. It's tricky. If the first part of a treble combination goes, normally another part comes down as well. And uh, just an expensive eight jumping penalties so far. Clever little like, half stride. Really <laughs> clever. He just backed himself off and said, no, it's okay, I've got this. But it's been great having her with us because the yard at the moment has a real international feel. You know, obviously, Kazuma Tomoto, who's over in the World Equestrian Games at the moment. Nice clear at the end there. We've enjoyed having Valerie from the US just inside that time on 89.25. Really good. Bar the muddle through the treble. That was a really polished round. And, you know, it's a massive thing to say, right, I'm going to go to England and train with William Fox Pitt. I'm going to target Blenheim. You're even just driving out of our yard William lent her the lorry. Georgia from our yard is grooming for her. Her husband's come over. He's a firefighter in the US. And massive hats off to you, Valerie, because that has been one big mission, and it's certainly mission accomplished. Well done. Well, 54.7 and a clear cross-country round here at Blenheim sees her finish inside the top 40. Uh, Valerie Vez Corondo Pride for the USA completing. So uh, next to come forward will be Charlotte Rowe with Peter Appleford and John Bevan's HHS Learcourt Cavalier. Just waiting for news on them to come into the main arena. The uh, We've got around uh, 15 or so horses left to go before the break. And uh, then we will have a break from around quarter to two until the... Uh, 2.40. 2.40 is when the top 23 start their show jumping and reverse order of merit, which means that uh, Marlin hansen Hotop, our leader after the first uh, two phases, will be the last to go. She'll need to uh, deliver in this final phase. Carlitos Quidditch K uh, certainly has done in the last couple of phases. As uh, next to come forwards, this is actually... Charlotte Rowe. Charlotte Rowe. Number HHS uh, Leah Court Cavalier for owners Peter Appleford and John Bevan. Good dressage and a good cross country. I mean, 34 totally respectable dressage. Just those time faults to add across the country yesterday for Charlotte, number 68. And um, she's, I think she'll be you know, pleased so far. Sometimes you can get a little bit. 
think that, that the competition hasn't quite gone well, but actually that's a, a totally decent um, performance all round so far. I have a feeling this is Claire Lewis. Oh, coming forward um, she we missed her a couple of horses ago and I actually think that she's jumping out of order so perhaps the horse threw a shoe in the in the warm-up or something um, but this is Claire Lewis coming forward with Kumro Calva we're having a nightmare with this one isn't it we've got no comms <laughs> we have no thing. audio so sorry so I think you're right it is number 79 is. I just saw it on the bridal number and of course it's Claire we recognize her any day of the week 57.2 I was actually thinking this doesn't look like Charlotte this does <laughs> Oh, goodness me. No, apologies to connections there. Claire Lewis and Akum Rowe Calvert, this 13-year-old by Pike. 57.2, their score coming forwards. She's amazing, Claire. I mean, she has been on this circuit for such a long time. She is such a consummate professional. She had that wonderful partnership with Significant at the five-star level. 59 years young and uh, enjoying having a horse at this level again. Um... She was here last season, and um, she owns this lovely, lovely horse, Kumro Calvo, and she's really enjoying it. Just going to pick up a time vault, unfortunately. 90 seconds is the time allowed. Otherwise, a clear jumping for Claire Lewis and uh, Kumro Calvo. So uh, here comes uh, Dan Jocelyn no. should be no Charlotte no. Rowe. Goodness me, Charlotte Rowe. Right, That's now we're back on track. Dan. Now we're back on track. Peter Appleford and John Bevan, 50.4, the score that she brings forwards. As uh, Charlotte uh, put in a really good clear round in the cross country yesterday. He's a really big, strong horse, but so eye catching. And she's got a really really busy team of horses based down in Devon yeah she's a real pro isn't she about 20 horses in point to pointing eventing she's does it very involved with the hunt down there as well um, and I just a huge apologies to everyone we've got no comms with the arena coming in so we're slightly co going blind but um, this definitely is Charlotte and this definitely is um, her lovely horse HHS Lee Court Cavalier owned by Peter Appleford and John Bevan Nice job so far. That swishy tail often makes them look like they're throwing their back end away as well, doesn't it? It shows that sort of scope that you really want to see on this last day. Well, how experienced is she? She's had four starts at the four-star long in the last 10 years. Um, and she really enjoys the racing side of things, training those point -to pointers on the Devon Hills. Such a should, fantastic place. She'd be a good person to follow in the hunting field as well. <laughs> I think you'd have to get your brave pants on. I think you would. <laughs> I think you would. And actually, this a horse that uh, came here having jumped two really nice clear rounds at Bergham and Hartbury as part of his preparation. Can be liable to the odd time penalty in this phase because he just takes a little bit of setting up. Good there, wasn't it? Again, that combination that you flagged up early as tricky with the related distance into the short two stride double and ah oh, that was unlucky she didn't deserve that really frustrating that the penultimate goes and she clears the last kicks on through the finish a time fault as well 0.4 of a time penalty one rail down 54.8 the final score and she will finish inside the top 40 charlotte Rowe and uh HHS Learcourt Cavalier. Well, just the three faultless rounds at the moment. We've had a few clear, but with time. But only three have gone clear and inside the time allowed set by uh, Die Body, our show jumping course designer here. As uh, we're in the final afternoon of competition at the Blanham Palace International Horse Trials, brought to you by the Jockey Club. Fantastic to have the Jockey Club on board the second year that they've been uh, organising the event. And so many exciting new partners. So much fun for all the family as well. It's absolutely a brilliant day out. Here is Dan Jocelyn for New Zealand with Carol King, Francesca Clapham, Sophie Allison, Sean and Lucy Allison's Cooley one to many. 45.0 his uh, total score. And actually he uh, had a super clear round in the cross country. Just uh, interestingly didn't totally have his foot flat to the board. It's very much about uh, getting a good qualifying result on the board, a good minimum eligibility requirement result. And Dan, so experienced, represented New Zealand at the highest level, at championship level. 
Yeah, this also went really well in the spring at Chatsworth and Bramham and um, showed, ri gave Dan the opportunity again to have a nice horse at this level. Formidable owners, a real team of knowledgeable... I was um, going to say, you're not going to get anything past them, <laughs> are you? <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Carol King, uh, Francesca Clapham, Sophie Allison, who's a very good rider herself and competed at the top level, and Sean and Lucy Allison as well. So I bet they're having fun with Dan. He's a great rider to be involved with, so experienced. And his daughter, uh, Jazz, is making a real name for herself as well, isn't she? She's um, a very, very accomplished little jockey. Yeah, and I think Dan's really enjoying the fact that she's enjoying his sport too. Um, and this is a horse who, 14 years, I'm not sure why he was a little bit um, cautious with him, because he is quite experienced at the level, and this is his third start here. It, it would only be a new ride for Dan. It was campaigned up to the level by Daisy Barkley, I believe. So I think Dan just kind of ticking boxes, getting to know the horse. Um, and I think you know, we had him in cross-country commentary yesterday, big step up to five star on the cards next year. Awesome. Well, good job, Dan. Definitely, he's starting to find which buttons he needs to press inside that optimum time of 90, 89.18. Just the two rails down, so a 53.0 drops him a couple of places on the leaderboard, but uh, not a bad effort for him. So uh, some 10 or so to go before the break. And uh, it is Alexander Hewell next to come forward. Dr. Sheila Rose, Elfield's Voyager, 44.8 in 30th, or a little higher overnight. 13-year-old uh, by Graffenstolz. And uh, Alex, who had so much fun in the first two uh, phases, particularly yesterday's cross-country phase with this little horse. 5.2 time penalties. She was quite fresh in the first phase, but used all of that to the best of her uh, ability yesterday over David Evans's cross-country track. Graffenstolz, such a Good such a good stallion at producing these horses. We've got a really good mare, second at Buccalo last year, with similar breeding. And one rail, two rails now, full for Alex, which is a shame. 30 years old, based in Bristol, and uh, renowned really for how good he is with the young horses. He really tries to pinpoint those good young horses he's got a very kind calm approach at working with the younger horses takes his time gives them the space to develop and um, find themselves ahead of stepping up to this sort of level she's just a, quite a hot little mare isn't she she just um, doesn't make it that easy loves the job just wants to get on with it sometimes a little bit too much two rails down so far as he comes through this last tricky bit with the oxa related dis uh, sorry the triple bar related distance to the double really backed off the first part of that double and again another to put in just a clever little sort of uh, shorter stride at the exit of it just backs herself off makes the jobs of the rider so much easier if the horses help them out like that she's got ability hasn't she it's just how to manage that brain as the last come down as well Annoying, that's expensive. Three down and 95.53. Um, six seconds over the time, so uh, 2.4 time penalties to add as well. You so are so good at the maths. Is <laughs> that the mental maths? Uh, 59.2, he'll I get a top 40 finish, um, but uh, that is the uh, score of Alex Hewell, Elfield's Voyager. Alice, I think you're going to head off, but thank you so much for this morning's coverage, and we'll look forward to having you back later. Well, well done, team. Um, certainly causing some problems. I'm looking forward to an exciting um, culmination of this great competition. Thanks so much, Nicole. Thank you, Alice. So uh, we've got... Uh, Around 10, 11 combinations to come forward before the uh, lunch break and then the top 23 jumping in reverse order of merit. We've had a couple of combinations, actually, riders jumping out of order simply because of uh, other commitments elsewhere. As, uh, this is Kylie Roddy and Carden oh. Earl Grey. So Declan Cullen, C. Vargan Ash haven't come forward as things stand yet, but this is Kylie Roddy and Carden Earl Grey as uh, sitting down alongside me in the commentary box now, David Dole. David, good to have you. Hey, Nicole, how are you doing? 
Very good, thank you. So we've got just three faultless rounds in the show jumping as things stand at the moment. Plenty of polls coming down. The time is um, causing its influence on the leaderboard, but actually others have made it look very straightforward and been about nine, ten seconds inside. So uh, a bit of lottery. I mean, you walked the course this morning and actually there's a lot of places to lose a little bit of time here, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And um, we've got Kylie Roddy here on the beautiful grey horse, Cardinal Earl, Earl Grey, um, one that I followed for quite a long time. Um, and yeah, you can definitely, you can save a lot of time, take a few strides out here and there. Um, there's a lot of dog legs, there's a lot of rollbacks as well. And um, you know, Kylie seems to be keeping up a, uh, a, a good pace here. Um, but yeah, you can definitely, you know, suddenly you can start watching the clock sort of tick away a little bit um, by adding a few strides. And um, I think Kylie you know, so far is giving us sort of a bit of a, an expert uh, expert class on you know to keep the horse moving he's a sort of quite a big striding horse anyway um but you know just seeing here on the rollback just keeping the horse moving and but you can it, it, like say sort of uh, just add strides and suddenly you know you can find yourself sort of three or four seconds over the time very easily kylie jumped a brilliant clear round she was one of the first outs on course yesterday morning and uh, put in a, a brilliant performance just a handful of time penalties 9.6 but so far in the show jumping just the uh, one down yeah it, she just uh, just was a bit too enthusiastic down to the, uh, the first part of the double there um, and that was a real shame because you know he, he's jumped really nicely for her and um, yeah, she finished off just with the one down um, and that would be a real shame and she just you know she proved the point that a, a good forward round has you know, got a inside the time there um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think Kylie would be a bit gutted about that pole actually because he, he jumped super and just looked a little bit enthusiastic. It, it's uh, it, it's a bit of a difficult one. That that double as we walked earlier is quite short, um, and I think sort of probably Kylie was just a little bit defensive into it and trying to sort of keep the horse short, and he just fought his way down, um, and unfortunately she paid the price for it. So Kylie Roddy, one rail down. She finishes on 47.5, stays in 29th position. So she drops one place on the leaderboard uh, with that rail down. And uh, that will see her with a top 30 finish guaranteed. But of course, reverse order of merit means that others still to come could have more rails down and uh, she could see herself moving up the leaderboard. Now coming forwards, it is uh, Ginny Thompson. Ginny with Capitan de Us. It's a 10 year old by Cosinus, owned by Ginny alongside David and Catherine Thompson. 46.3, number 15. And uh, Ginny, who had uh, a super spin cross country with this horse yesterday, wouldn't be the most experienced at the level and is a horse she's produced up the uh, grades herself. So just took it steady, 12 time faults. But otherwise, uh, lots of experience gained. No, but a, a, a lovely looking horse and it yeah, sort of looks really blood um, and definitely, I think, hopefully one for Ginny for the future. Um, I was about to say, a lovely big jump there. Just got a little bit close to the front rail of that oxer as she came around the corner. Um, but he's definitely uh, he's definitely giving the fences enough height. Um, and, you know, sort of a gain here on the rollback. It's, it's a little bit difficult, especially with some of the um, more inexperienced horses. Um, these rollbacks can be quite time costly as well as actually, especially on the last day for some of these horses, um, it can be quite tiring as well for them. Um, and so you know, you've got to keep the engine going, keep, keep the canter up. And um, you know, there, there's three decent, uh, decent rollbacks on this track. And I, th I think for, yeah, this horse has got sort of a fairly big canter stride and a big jump. And so it is you know, not going to be the easiest to turn, uh, turn around the corners. Do you change your warm up routine? after a three day compared to a one day? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think it depends a little bit on, big jump there over the triple bar, um, depends on what type of horse you're riding. Um, and, you know, sort of probably some of the more blood ones get a little bit flat after cross country. Um, and so you want to try and get the shape back into their jumps. And some of these slightly more foreign horses, they keep the roundness in their jump a little bit easier. Um, so probably can, you know, do a little bit more of a normal warm up. Um, before the before the show jumping, um, I've got a few that I would maybe ride twice. Um, looks like she was just uh, two seconds over the time there, so under under pole down. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple that I would ride twice. Um, sometimes you know just so they don't have too much um, time actually before they um, actually go in the ring. 
um, and, and jump. And so I don't spend too much time there, but I spend a bit more time sort of maybe in a couple of hours earlier doing a little bit more work on the flats and working on the canter and making sure that they're, they're back under control. Well, 4.8, so four jumping, 0.8 for the time penalties for Ginny. And actually, that sees her drop a couple of places on the leaderboard just uh, down into 32nd, so 51.1, her total score. Now it is uh, Sophie Foraker, number 94, with Kay Jenman's Laudana van het Liza Hofzi, a combination that have good number of completions at four-star level to their name. And actually a horse that was so impressive in the cross country yesterday had a super spin with Sophie and they come forward 43.4 first part of the combination goes and the last yeah he looks like um, he might just be a little bit tired having galloped really well yesterday um, you know, again he looks like a, a big horse and these turns um, probably just taking its toll a little bit um, a little bit of a trot stride there on the turn Yeah, and you know, sort of like he he looks um, in his in his build and his stamp, you know, a little bit more Irish, and so his his jump it's not quite as round as um, one or two of the others that we've just seen. Um, so she's you know Sophie's doing a great job in keeping him together, um, so that um, you know he can keep that power. And th these these aren't small fences in the show jumping, um, and you know walking the track earlier, it, it's a, a decent track and requiring sort of a lot of. Um, Oh, let me see. You know, he's struggling through the combination there, um, requiring you know the horses to be um, listening really well. And I think just where he's probably a little bit tired on the last day, um, just not quite um, on as top jumping form as it probably normally is. But it finished really nicely. Well, another four-star long completion under their belts. Uh, just sneaking a time fault, unfortunately, there as well. So uh, point four to add time and sixteen jumping. Yeah, a, bit, oh, a, a big, big horse there to turn. So, um, yeah, sort of like not surprising that she ended up with uh, with a time fault or two. So they finish on fifty nine point eight and drop a few places on the leaderboard into fortieth. Next to come forwards, it is uh, Tom Rowland with uh, Michael Wilmshurst and Alison Sharp's K and D Steel Pulse, an eleven year old by Tinarana's Inspector, forty two point five in twenty fifth as things stand at the moment. So. Uh, Tom yeah. Rowland, next to jump. N nice to see Tom with a few horses up at this level. Um, and you know, we caught up with him earlier as um, as we were walking the course. He was walking the course as well. And I think we had one walk. I think he walked around about three times um, as we were stood there chatting for, for quite a while. Um, a bit lucky to the first there, just catching the back rail. He's a rider not and he just had a quick glance back over his shoulder to see if it stayed. I think it did today. Um, yeah, it did by the looks of it. Yeah, yes. and then the horse seems to, you know, that oxer seems to have learnt from that little mistake at the first fence there. Sometimes, if you ride your luck, actually, um, it can help the horse. It can be hugely beneficial. Yeah, yeah. Um, gives the horses a little bit of a wake up call. Yeah, you, you've got a fairly decent crowd here watching as well, and it can be a little bit distracting at times. Um, so, you know, sometimes it can just, oh, that's a bit of a shame, just looking down into the water tray there. Um, but, you know, it can just be a little bit of a reminder to some of these horses that they've got to actually, you know, they've still got a job to do. And, um, you know, the, the, the stands here, all the flags flapping, there's quite a big um, marquee on the side with a lot of hospitality and a lot of um, people there watching as well. So it, it's, it's a lot for them to all take in. You know, he's doing a great job here, keeping it nicely balanced. Jumps the triple bar really well. You know, sit up. Just a little bit of a rub on the way out, but you know, kept the horse nice and short and together and uh, jumped through that combination really well. He asked your opinion on that distance as well, didn't he? <laughs> so I'm pleased it came off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think he was. He originally thought that there should be an extra stride there, but um, no, you know, the horse went down there really nicely. Um, and I think it was given him, you know, apart from that one fence, given him a really good ride. So Tom Rowland and uh, Candy Steel Pulse eight jumping, uh, just waiting oh, so for missed. time time faults as well. Point four of a time fault um, to add to their score should still. Oh, finish. you have the last fence down. Ah, just out of shot. That's so frustrating. And uh, we'll just uh, give him eight point four in total. Finishes on fifty point nine in, and he'll get a top thirty finish here. 
Now it is the turn of Lauren Lillywhite and uh, Billy Beaufort, 44.6, their score coming forwards. And uh, just 10 time faults cross country yesterday. Lauren comes forward. Another horse that looks like um, yeah, it's got a, a big jump and probably not always the easiest to keep under control. And yeah, it's sort of like the, these fences here, especially having jumped around the cross country yesterday. I mean, the four star fences cross country wise, they, they've got to have so much scope and enough talent to um, to jump around. And does it look like she, she had the first fence down, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, this horse has got a, a really big jump and looks fairly enthusiastic here on the last day, which is nice to see. Um, a little bit too enthusiastic there to the seventh fence. Um, and now it looks like she's having to sort of do a little bit of a wrestling to get back under control again. It's a canny old turn back there as well, isn't it? Because it's just by the in-gate. Yeah, and you know, sort of hopefully horses at this age and stage in their careers won't pay much attention to it. Um, sort of go, you know, going back by the, the warm-up and the in-and-out in gate, but it can be quite distracting for them. And I did see, I think, was it one poor person early on? I was watching on one of the other screens. Yeah. She, she turned right rather than left, and oh, it's so gutting. I mean, you know, the effort these horses and riders put in um, to get here and to complete, and that's a really unfortunate last fence down there as well. So a few uh, jumping penalties, but no time penalties yeah, really to add speedy. for Lauren Lily White. And a Billy Beaufort, the second of her rides, 12 jumping in total, 36.6. And actually, she'll have two horses completing here this weekend and uh, lots to look forward to for the future. So uh, just the five combinations to go before the lunch break. And, uh, of course, we will be back with you at around 20 to 3 with the reverse order show jumping for the top 23 as we see who will be crowned uh, Blen and Palace International Horse Trials Champions in 2022. Here is Tom Grant with Carla Wheatcroft's MGH Tokyo Phil. Second ride for Tom. He came forward with Penhills Optimax a little bit earlier on. And 54.0, the score that he brings forward now. Yeah, and Tokyo Phil um, produced by Lucy and Porig McCarthy early on. And great to see that, you know, sort of like the horses continued up the levels. And um, yeah, he, he's a big horse and, you know, taking a little bit of time to um to get to the level but um a again another one with a lovely big you know big scopey jump um tom so far is doing a great job in looking after that jump as well he's looking a little bit spooky down there from six to seven but um you know, tom's doing a great job keeping traveling forwards he's got a big stride round the turn and this is a really gappy little upright that he's jumped there um, you know, and Tom's being really sensible, moving on, you know, looking after that clock a little bit. Um, and now he's going to, he's fairly forwards the triple bar here, going to have to sit up. because This is a short combination. Jump that super. Hey, Tom's, you know, did a really good job there. He's moving up, he actually cut inside. Gave the last fence a little bit of a rub, but I think uh, a really good clear round and you know, sort of well inside the, you know, or not well inside, but inside the time. And I think that was, um, yeah, super round. Very good. Comfortably inside uh, four clear rounds so far. And that is all. So uh, he will finish no worse than 33rd, Tom Grant and MGH Tokyo Phil. Now it is the turn of uh, Grace uh, Taylor with uh, Mum Ann Taylor's Game Changer. They were actually top 10 in the eight and nine year old class here last year. Yeah, I know this is a horse that Grace thinks quite a lot of. So um, you know, it's nice to see the progression as well. Um, having done the young horse class last year and then you know, moving on to um, you know, the, the long format class um, this year. And actually jumped clear here last year in that eight and nine year old class. Grace, really talented jockey. Her mum Anne's come over from America to watch this weekend, as has uh, one of her brothers. Yeah, and Grace, still based at Washbrook Farm, Aston the Walls. Just gave the just jumping out the treble there a little bit of a rub, but um, 
you know, again, looks like she's looking after uh, the canter well there, moving on, keeping the horse traveling. Looks like there's a huge amount of power. He really wants to get to his fences, doesn't he? He's very, very keen. Yeah, you can see that in the odd little sort of head shake and um, almost a little bit of frustration from him. And oh, that's a real shame. Um, just a little bit of a too much of a rub over the the uh, fence number seven there on the back rail. He certainly doesn't look like he ran across country for uh, ten and a half, eleven minutes yesterday. No, he's you know he's got his ears pricked there. He's looking a little bit cheeky, um, a little bit perky. Um, but um, but no, as I say, a little bit on the forward side down there. And yeah, paid the price. But Two. definitely, yeah, yeah, I just think um, Grace will be, you know, will be, should be pleased with this round, and you know, definitely a horse for the, you know, for her for the future. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a decent, decent jumping track out there, and um, you know, she, she did a good job just inside the time, point five of a second. So 49.1, Grace uh, Taylor goes into 28th. Well, this is Declan Cullen, C. Vargan Ash, another jumping just out of order, just keeping us on our toes. But I'll be honest, I recognise this horse very easily, so I, I'm not complaining. Owned by Becky Cullen, 48.3, his score coming forwards. Yeah, he don't get uh, too many skew balls uh, competing at this sort of level. So, no, he's uh, a very sort of recognisable horse. I can't even remember whether I've just commentated on the cross country with Declan. So um, maybe uh, there was a hold was on cross country, so a little bit earlier on. So that's pass possibly why he's a little bit late. Yeah, we'll let him off. We'll let him off. All the first oh. part of the combination goes. Yeah, it's, again, I think a horse that looks like uh, it's you know come out well from the cross country yesterday. Look, possibly a little bit too well, a little bit enthusiastic, too enthusiastic there to the to the treble. Declan looks like um, you know, he knows the horse quite well, and it doesn't look doesn't look the easiest. No, the horse went actually to Bukalo. He's um, a thirteen year old now, but he went to Bukalo as a younger horse back in um, I think as a nine year old as part of the Irish Nations Cup team um, in twenty eighteen, and has had a bit of time off since. So this is the first sort of really big one back since then. Yeah, and you know, always um, difficult to tell when horses have had a bit of time off. You know, their, their first big competition back, it's always, you know, sort of like, uh, you never quite know what, what they're going to be like again. And, you know, especially if they've had a few years and COVID really hasn't helped as well. Um, and so, you know, it's nice that the horse, I think, has, you know, looks like it's had a, a good run cross country and he's given it a, a decent ride show jumping as well. Um, with just the, the one pole down there and uh, well, well inside the time. I think he'll be very pleased with that. 52.3, Declan Carlin and C. Vargan Ash will actually uh, climb, even though they've had uh, one rail down, because that is how influential the show jumping has been. They'll be uh, 31st or better. Now it is Wills Oakden. Wills, who's already had one uh, uh, jump in at the final phase a little bit earlier on this morning. And he comes forward now. He had a really unlucky rail with a class coolie, but he now comes forward with DHI by design. 48.3, his score coming forwards. Yeah, no, Wills has got a, a, a lovely string of horses now, and um, yeah, they're, they're really coming through. I went on the Nations Cup team with him to Haradupa a couple of weeks ago, and, um, you know, sort of like he, he's got a, a fantastic group of, of owners as well that came out to support him, and... Um, got some lovely horses at the moment and, and this one yeah, again looks uh, a super jumping horse and I think had an unfortunate pin mim clip or something yesterday. He did, he had a mim clip and he was only one second over the time um, he put in a really good round in the cross country, just caught one of the Equilate rails at 12 behind and unfortunately it, it collapsed so 11 penalties for that but um, yeah, one of those things I think as a rider you can be a little bit sort of frustrated about, but you have to put behind you a little bit. And, um, you yeah, know, the safety nowadays is so important cross country. So, um, yeah, you have to just put it down to um, one of those things, unfortunately. And um, and you can really see Wills was one of the fastest rounds first thing this morning or this afternoon. You can really see how he moves on. He wastes no time. He, he lands and he moves and you know, the horse is... Uh, Horse is listening to him well anyway, but um, you know, as soon as he moves, uh, as soon as he lands after his fences, he moves on and 
keeps the horse traveling and he's been really tight with his turns a um, bit of a lucky rub there to uh, the second to last fence um, and again I think a little bit of a rub to the last fence and Wills is looking back there just to see whether he did have a, a pole down or not but um, but I think clear round yep clear yeah. round number clear five round. for Wills Oat and DHI by design and uh, he stays at 20 Fifth on the leaderboard, so uh, could well improve. Now it is the turn of Selena Mills with Mr. and Mrs. Rucker's Gilmer, just an 11 year old on a score of 40.6. Selena was so impressive actually in the cross country with this horse uh, yesterday. She's had a top 20 finish already today in the eight and nine year old class. And Gelma comes forward uh, having jumped clear just with a handful of time penalties. So 40.6, the score she brings forward. And in 23rd on the leaderboard. So Selena Mills and Gelma could put herself at the head of proceedings as we head into this afternoon's show jumping very soon. Yeah, this is a, an impressive looking horse with you know, really long legs. Um, Selena, yeah, I've just seen her go, go cross country in the eight, nine year old. So she's obviously got a, a fantastic team behind her, making sure that um, you know, she's in the right place at the right time and that the horses are ready. And um, you know, they look like they've done a good job in, uh, in getting her there. And um, again, this is another horse that looks like it, it, you know, it didn't even hardly run yesterday. I mean, it, it's really pinging and although it's, you know, it's getting its legs a little bit of, an, in a, bit of a muddle, um, it's not surprising with long legs like that. Um, but yeah, you know, you can see just a little bit too enthusiastic, I think, around the corner there at times. And Selena's having to work quite hard for it. A bit, oh yeah, a bit deep to the wall there. Um, just that enthusiasm just got a little bit uh, the better of Selena there, I think. You know, she's just getting back a bit of control. And and the good thing about some of these turnbacks is that actually, you know, it can be a negative for some of the horses, but actually for one like, one like Selena's, you know, it can sit them back on their hind legs, um, you know, sort of, and, and help the rider to, to gain a little bit of control, especially for one that's a little bit sort of forward and enthusiastic like uh, Selena's horse here. And this is a short double and yeah, um, you know, she just was a bit, a bit enthusiastic into it and, and then paid the price a little bit. It's got a, a big long stride, this horse and, um, yeah, she looked like she just sort of struggled a bit down that distance. So Selena Milnes and Gelmer two down at just inside at the time. Point, so they will finish. Of the time no, ninety seconds. Oh, ninety seconds. Ninety oh. seconds is the optimum. So uh, the optimum, the time allowed. So uh, she finished on forty-eight point six. We'll just drop a couple of places on that leaderboard. And actually, just a reminder that the one to beat as things stand at the moment is. Uh, 47.5, Kylie Roddy, Carden Earl Grey. Now, though, jumping out of order, it is uh, Amy Penny with Gary Powers, PSH Gazelle, the third of Amy's rides. 52.0 is 14-year-old by Flipper Dell, owned by Gary Powers, I say, of Power Sport Horses. And Amy's third ride here. She had three super clear rounds cross-country. Yeah, and those... Um, that PSH prefix is starting to be sort of quite well ne well known now. Um, and you know, to have quite a few horses up at this top level. Um, and so far, she looks like she's doing a good job. Again, another one that's you know, sort of come out across country, but looking you know, nice and enthusiastic, and really pinging over the water tray there. I was just able to put a slightly better curve than Selena. Uh, Selena managed into that wall and you know, a good shot down from the wall to the um, to the orange oxa. And this horse looks like it's a little bit of a, a pocket rocket and you know, quite enthusiastic. And she's having to do a little bit of work is Amy and just gets away with jumping uh, you know, jumping out through that tight tight double I've got a stock there flapping in the wind a little bit um, it's always a little bit distracting when uh, you have a bit of a, a wardrobe malfunction like that but I think she might have just had the last fence down the last to be fair uh, she's inside the time the last rattled significantly so I didn't it. see it fall so yes yeah. unfortunately it did go yeah it was a real shame 
And just the one down, so Amy Penny finishes on 56.0, but a good uh, qualification run for her, and she'll be inside the top 35. This will be the most well-placed of her rides. So this is how things stand after uh, cross-country. Marlin Hansen, Hotop, Carlitos, Quidditch K, the ones to beat, 24.6. Gemma Stevens, two inside the top 10 for Gemma. She does a lot of pure show jumping as well. She'll be relishing this afternoon's pressure. Sarah Bullimore, Coraway. Uh, 27.8 within a poll of our leaders and one poll covering uh, fourth through to ninth to Tom Jackson rounding out the top 10 with Farndon. A little bit further on, the top 20, of course, all jumping this afternoon. Is it power? Sends a fine just outside the top 10 as things stand at the moment. And the likes of uh, another ride for Wills Oakden, Arclo Puissance. Uh, he's already put in some very good rounds in the show jumping this morning. Jesse Campbell, Cooley Lafitte uh, rounding out the top 20. But of course, uh, we will be back with the top 23 jumping in reverse order of merit a little bit later on this afternoon. David Dole has been sat alongside me. David, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Nice and, to see you, And uh, it is good to have you with us. And we will be back at 2.40 for the top 23 in reverse order of merit. Who will be standing atop that podium a little bit later on this afternoon? Join us to find out.
Welcome back to Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials and the final day of jumping because it is all about uh, this final 22 riders to go and we're looking forward to seeing just who can top that podium. The winner here 12 months ago has just won the World Championships because uh, Yasmin Ingham is the brand new world champion, Banzai de Loire, who won in this arena 12 months ago. And that is the kind of form line we are looking at. So to get us underway, it will be uh, Tim Cheffings. Tim with Emma Bryant and his own Gaston. David Dole sat down alongside me. David, the excitement levels. And I have to say that form line from here at Blenheim, just showing how good it is. Oh, absolutely. And it's, um, it's great to see that a... A previous Blenheim winner has continued that sort of form and um, yeah, fantastic result for Yaz. And, um, you know, sort of hopefully you know, Blenheim's proving to show that um, it's producing the talent of the future. It absolutely is. And this young man is very, very talented. Tim Cheffings, a former Mark Todd Bridging the Gap scholarship winner. And this is a horse that he thinks a huge amount of. On a score of 40.4, 22nd position coming forwards has had one down so far. And this is the, the distance that we saw in the um, first half of show jumping, David, that caught a few out and actually has caught him out again there. Yeah, the, the distance is um, you've either got to ride a fairly forward distance up to it and um, from the triple bar to the double there. And it, it's quite a forward distance and it is causing quite a few problems. The, the double is quite short on the way out. And so it's, it's proving you know, you're having to ride forwards to the triple bar and then... Um, you know, you've got to take that forward momentum a little bit to the to the double and then rely a little bit on the horse's um, carefulness uh, jumping into the double and that they actually hold their balance to be able to jump out of that. And we just saw Tim there being a little bit too forwards the first part of the double um, and unfortunately having the front rail down. Well, actually, two rails down in total, 1.2 time, 49.6 his total, and he drops down to 26th. Now coming forwards, it is another ride for Ginny Thompson. Ginny, we're the Gladstone the second in 20th position. And uh, 39.8, her score coming forwards. The uh, clubhouse leader is uh, Kylie Roddy Carden Earl Grey, 47.5. So that is the score to beat. So we've got a little bit of a gap now to uh, those that are coming. So uh, a couple of rails in hand. Yeah, Kylie did a great job earlier, and you know, nice to see that that, um, that you know great jumping rounds are um, proving you know sort of well bad jumping rounds are proving costly, and good jumping rounds are uh, you know moving people up the leaderboard. Well, one one pole would see Ginny hold her position. Two poles would see her go down behind Kylie Roddy. She's having to work fairly hard there. You can see her sort of encouraging the horse forwards down the treble there. Um, you know, just, just coming onto the roll onto the roll back here. Keeping the horse's forward momentum going. And jump that really nicely. A few horses you find will just have a bit of a look down into the water tray, but you know, hers didn't have a look at all. Um, you know, Ginny's giving this horse a super ride. Not looking the most forward of, um, of rounds, but I think containing this you know, big jump and fairly enthusiastic horse and again you know sort of we were chatting about earlier it's lovely to see um the horse is looking so well after cross country you know, this one's definitely um ears pricked and you know pulling Ginny's arms out a little bit interesting to see what it does down the distance here really careful in made a super effort and actually, because he was quite tight to the first element, it bought him a little bit more space in the double. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, really snapped his snapped his toes up there. Um, and hopefully... Yeah, oh, yes. Super round. Really good. Jenny Thompson and Gladstone inside the time, and they will finish on that score of 39.8. Brilliant performance from the young New Zealand rider. And uh, that will set the new target, 39.8. Ginny Thompson, the one to beat here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials as we head in to the reverse order show jumping. David Dole sat alongside me, the top 20, going in reverse order of merit. A couple of riders jumping a little bit out of order because they've got two horses in here. Marlin Hansen, Hotop, Carlitos Quidditch K. Our leaders after dressage and cross country will be the last 
to jump. Now for New Zealand's uh, Jesse Campbell. He comes forward with Jay Jaffar's Kuli Lafitte, 10-year-old by Jatem Flamenco. Yeah, no, it's just seen a, a great job by the New Zealand um, World Championship team winning a bronze medal. Bronze medal. Yeah, um, I know Jesse probably would have been a bit disappointed to not be out there, but um, you know, nice to see that he's had a good weekend so far at Blenheim. He's a really talented jockey, Jesse. Yeah, and he and Georgie are starting to, um, you know, produce a, a really sort of decent yard of horses, and um, they're obviously working sort of well together. And um, you know, I'm sure it's not always the easiest having a, a husband and wife um, combination competing against one another. And um, I know Tim and Janelle do it really well. Um, I know even when my wife and I go show jumping, it's uh, <laughs> it's competitive enough. So let alone, uh, I can't imagine what it's like being at a, a you know a fairly big three day against one another. Jesse's a super pilot. I mean, he's a really tall chap, but it's, it's lovely, you know, lovely and well in balance there on top of the horses. Yeah, he really does. He works hard on it as well. And uh, Cooley Lafitte certainly looking pretty good so far. It's an interesting um, vertical there because when we were walking the course, I said I didn't think it was that big, but it's situated in almost like a little dip in the ground, but it's jumped really well today. Yeah, it has. And, uh, you know, sort of actually... You know, again, one of these rollbacks. Um, oh, you know, being a little bit lucky through the double there. Um, yeah, a bit of a rollback to that vertical, and it's quite gappy as well. But as, as you say, Nicole, the um, the horses have jumped it really well. Um, I don't think we've hardly seen anything fault at it so far. So Jesse Campbell, Cooley Lafitte are uh, very, very pleased, I would imagine, with that round because uh, inside at the time, very comfortably. Yeah, it goes, it goes into the lead and you know, well deserved. 39.7, the new score to beat. So it is a New Zealand 1-2 at the moment. Jesse Campbell, Ginny Thompson. And uh, 39.7 is the score that he will uh, take to the end of the competition. Now it is the turn of Charlotte Agnew with White Heather Eventing's uh, Cooley Carnival Lady on a score of 39.3. And it's nice to see Charlotte back up at the, um, you know, the top level of the sport. She's had a sort of a slightly quieter at a time um, I know she's just moved yards and so um, you know a lot of sort of change for her in the last little while but um, here yeah, she and I both train with the same dressage trainer Adam Kemp um, so I see quite a bit of Charlotte and chat to her quite a bit and, and you know I know she was excited to be coming to Blenheim this week yeah and this is an 11 year old by my oh my just added a handful of uh, cross country time penalties to the dressage school of 38.5, just what two seconds over the time in the cross country. David Evans's track certainly proved influential yesterday. Yeah, this looks a fairly sort of feisty horse, so hopefully, oh, as I say that, um, yeah, unfortunately, two fences down through the treble there, um, possibly just not the base, best of um, approaches, and then unfortunately, sort of paid, paid the price for that. That's a difficult thing, Nicole, with these sort of horses that, um, you know, probably sort of great cross-country horses. And unfortunately, um, you know, sort of when they get to the show jumping, sometimes they end up being a bit too enthusiastic and, you know, don't always manage to pick their toes up quite high enough around the show jumps almost sometimes because they're just sort of so enthusiastic about jumping and, um, you know, just uh, get ahead of themselves a little bit and forget where they where they should be putting their feet over the coloured poles. Worked hard going down to that combination, but actually the horse was really careful for her. Cooley Carnival Lady. Just the two to go. Two down so far for Charlotte Agnew. So eight jumping penalties to add. That time allowed 90 seconds. And she clears the last as well. So Charlotte Agnew uh, will drop down the leaderboard and there's going to be uh, some time penalties as well. Some yeah. two point four time penalties. Yeah, and you could see there in Charlotte's round, you know, she, she was using the corn as well to get um, Carnival Lady back under control, and um, you know, so that is the, sometimes the price you pay, and sometimes you have to say to yourself, well, <coughs> it's better off to you know to get a couple of time faults and um, you know to to try and leave a few more of the poles up, 
and you know, sort of Carnival Lady looked fairly enthusiastic there. So I think Charlotte was very sensible oh, right, in yeah. you know taking a little bit of extra time and using the corn as well to just sit her back and um, on the hind legs so that um, she didn't have any more fences down. So uh, next to go for Ireland, it is uh, Lucy Latter with RCA Patron Saint, 38.0. Their uh, two-phase score coming forward to the show jumping. And unfortunately, the first goes. Yeah, and it can just be, Nicole, you know, a little bit of sort of, especially to that first fence, a little bit of lack of concentration sometimes. Um, you know, there's quite a lot of crowd beside that first fence and quite a bit of atmosphere. So it just looked like it wasn't quite paying enough attention. And then we've got here, you know, Lucy looks like she's having to work, sort of work fairly hard around the track. Um, doesn't look the easiest of jumpers, um, but, um, but you know, Lucy's doing a good job now, trying to get sort of back under control, keep that roundness and keep the shape in the canter and in the jump. A little bit of a rub there to the vertical, but, um, you know, sort of got away with that. And it's nice to see so many of these Irish riders coming over. Um, there's a lot of European horses here doing the eight, nine-year-olds as well. And you know, it just shows how sort of important Blenheim is in the calendar for um, you know, the eventing community. And um, yeah, unfortunately for Lucy, it's not, um, not being the best of rounds so far. Um, but I'm sure, you know, sort of like a, a good experience for horse and rider. Um, you know, looking on into the future for uh, for better and greater things and nice jump over the last fence there very good a few time penalties as well four seconds over 0.4 for every second which means 1.6 time penalties to add and uh, lucy latter will go forward uh, to the end of the competition and a completion here at blenheim but it will drop her a few places down the leaderboard she'll sit just outside the top 30. Now, though, it is the turn of Wills Oakton with Kathleen Wilkinson and Rachel Woods. Arclay Puissance is an 11 year old by Puissance sitting on a score of 36.9. And Wills, who actually has already had two rides a little bit earlier on today and had two very good show jumping rounds as well, at one clear and one for just one pole down. So he could really put the pressure on here. The current leader, remember, Jesse Campbell, 39.7. Yeah, and Will's, um, I think Will's lives up in Stirling, up in Scotland, and um, he, he, he's a fantastic jockey, and it, it's great to see you know, the, the strength and depth and talent of horses that he's got at the moment. To have three in a long format, um, yeah, especially somewhere like here in Blenheim, is, um, yeah, is, is very impressive. And I know he had a busy time. I think he had about 12 horses at Blair a couple of weeks ago as well and things. So you know, he's obviously got a real um, strength and depth in, a, in his team of horses at the moment. He does. He has a serious work ethic as well. And this horse is one that actually has completed at this level previously, was formerly campaigned by Oliver Townend. Yeah, and it's not always the easiest when, um, you know, when you're taking over rides from somebody like Oliver. And unfortunately, having said that that vertical's hardly come down, Wills unfortunately has done the rollback and, uh, and had, had that little upright down. And Arclo Puissance just looks like he's got a little bit enthusiastic. But Will's did a good job there down to the double. Um, you know, kept him under control, kept the jump, kept the straightness. Um, and you know, he's been giving him a good ride so far. Hopefully just the last fence here, taking a bit of a pull, set it back. And yeah, you know, good job. Um, I think uh, the clock has actually broken in the main ring. Yeah. So we'll just wait for the uh, time to be checked by the ground jury because they will have a backup clock up in uh, the scorers, which is where they will all be sat uh, throughout. And he is actually round comfortably inside the time. So one pole, it'll be a top 20 finish, 40.9, the score on which he completes. And... Uh, yeah, that, that was you know, well-deserved well round, and he jumped that well, and it was an unfortunate, um, unfortunate rally had there. And, you know, well done, Wills. Jesse Campbell continues his rise up the leaderboard, 39.7 is the score to beat. So he's within a pole of our next competitor to come forwards. And it is uh, Lucy Robinson with Michelle Bartlett's uh, Cosmic Charm. This is an 11-year-old by Future Illusion. 36.1 her score to come forward to this final phase. 
And this will be an interesting one to watch. Um, Lucy looks like she's got a hackamore on her um, on her horse, which is a, a bitless bridle. Um, sometimes, you know, sort of after cross country, the horses can have a few splits in their mouths and things and get a little bit uncomfortable. So she's opted for um, comfort for her horse. And you know, so a lot of the control comes from the front of the horse's nose rather than um, from the mouth and have a bit in its mouth. So as you can see, she's got sort of some big metal shanks on the um, you know, on the side of the horse's cheeks. And they can't, it's not always the easiest to control the horses with a hackamore in. So as I say that, she just ran through the front rail of the double, uh, of the treble there. Um, but yeah, a hackamore, Nicole, isn't always the, uh, the easiest to ride in. Um, as I know from experience. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? You know, it's so horses for courses. Some horses have bits that they love. Some have bits that they absolutely hate. And, and, and some you spend a little while trying to work out a happy medium. But unfortunately, two rails, that big uh, oxer at seven goes as well for Lucy Robinson. Yeah, and, and sometimes, unfortunately, you know, as a rider, you have to... Um, to make the choice as to whether you know you can actually you're actually able to just jump your horse on the last day um and you know sort of sometimes you have to go well you know i might not have all the control i need but at least you know you're here and you're actually jumping you know at blenheim um uh, which is a you know, fantastic achievement in itself uh, a lot of these horses and um you know she just gets away with it through the double there and um but it just shows just that you know the horse where um, he's got this hackamore in, just a little bit flatter than probably it would normally be, um, which just meant he's, she's just had these couple of rails down. Just the last to go, and uh, bit I of think a rub there. A bit of a rub, but I think it stayed. stayed. Yep. Three down and three seconds over the time, so 1.2 times, 13.2 in total to add for Lucy Robinson, and she will stay inside the top 20. She drops uh, down to 18th on the leaderboard, just drops a couple of places, 41.3 was uh, her total score. In fact, it'll be a little bit higher than that, just waiting for that score to be updated, and that will probably see her drop outside of the top ten. Now, though, it is the turn of uh, Gemma Stevens, and uh, Gemma jumping out of order because she'll also be the penultimate rider to go with Jalapeno. This is Flash Cooley, owned by Prue Dawes, uh, little ten-year-old by CSF Mr. Croon. 29.7 is the score that they bring forward, Gemma put in a superb clear round inside the time yesterday I actually messaged Emma last night and said days like yesterday two clear rounds inside the time at four star are why you stay in the sport she's been doing so much show jumping of late and she said don't worry I'm not going anywhere yeah Gemma's got a lovely uh, jumping horse called Candy Girl and she's been doing fantastically well with that and um, we've got a couple of other jumpers coming up as well but no it's great to see Gemma's still enthusiastic about her her eventing and nice to see her here this weekend and this horse such a cool little character went really well here in the eight nine year old class last year owner prue Dawes is a big supporter of Gemma's. she actually has her horses based at Gemma's as well and uh, she herself is a very accomplished rider up to the three star level but this little horse is one that Gemma absolutely adores at home. Won the Hickstead Aventus Grand Prix a little bit earlier on this year. Yeah, and doesn't doesn't look the easiest to jump, but um, Gemma's you know so far given him a great ride, and um, he's certainly got he's got a very white tail there as well. So um, whoever's grooming for Gemma at the moment is uh, you know is doing a fantastic job because that's that's taken a bit of effort to get it that white. Yeah, Charlotte Overton, her head girl, has just been a massive part of Gemma's team over the last few years. She absolutely adores the horses. And Flash Cooley, so far, staying on that 29.7. Yeah, and Gemma's shown her experience there. You know, rode down really well to that double, and um, yeah, that horse really pinged through it. Just the last to go, Gemma Tattersall, or Gemma Stevens, I should say. Flash Cooley, she's going to have at least one inside the top ten. Big pats for Flash Cooley, inside the time very comfortably. And Gemma T Stevens, still getting used to, <laughs> used to the change of name, will be a very, very good score to beat. 29.7, Gemma Stevens leads the way. We'll see her a little bit later on with Jalapeno as the penultimate rider to go. But all to play for here. Now it is the turn of Nikolai Oldinger with his own Timo. This is a 12-year-old by Timolino on a score of 35.9. Yeah, and another um, European 
um, come all the way, you know, come all the way from Germany. Um, and again, you know, another beautifully presented horse. Uh, these grey horses take a lot of scrubbing, uh, especially you know, the, the stables, are, the lovely stables here at Blenheim. But um, you know they're still not um, palatial or the biggest, and so um, the horses do like to um, get themselves nice and mucky overnight. So the, the girls and boys that are looking after them have been doing a fantastic job. Um, and unfortunately, just um, had a bit of a rub over the second fence there. That actually just drops him behind Jesse Campbell, who moves up another place on the leaderboard. But uh, so a little bit of a look at the water tray there, but ju still jumping clear this part of the course. Actually, the Germans in and sort of recent years have come over to Blenheim a bit more, haven't they? And um, tried to come and come and raid. I think they're going to be spoiling the party <laughs> potentially this afternoon as well because Marlene Hansen Hotop leads the way. She will be the last to jump this afternoon. Ooh, getting really away with there. A, a real rub on the p part of that uh, Oxer going into the double. Nikolai Aldinger comes down the final line, just the one rail down. And he clears the last. We'll wait for details of his time, but uh, inside the time. And so uh, shouldn't be too expensive either. We'll see him drop uh, to a score of 39.9, which actually we'll just see him go into uh, just behind Ginny Thompson as well. So he'll go fourth on the live leaderboard, guaranteed a top 16 finish. And... Uh, we head in towards these final few combinations uh, to come forwards. Here is uh, for Great Britain, Alex Bragg. Alex rides uh, Queen Diva, owned by the Rowe family, Mike and Naomi Rowe, who are huge supporters of the sport. 34.6, uh, their score coming forwards. Yeah, so Mike and Naomi uh, have been fantastic long-term supporters of Alex, and actually I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, they also have a horse with me called Cobalt de Dongy, um, and I know Quinn Diva is, um, you know, is definitely a, a lovely, talented horse and you know, a great one for Alex to have in his string um, and hopefully jumps well here today. Alex made it happen through that combination. Yeah, he worked hard she's, there. She's a really careful jumper, but she um, would be on Echo Ratings numbers one of the best jumpers in the field. But I always feel slightly nervous when I say that because I don't want to... Um, Jinx anyone, she's a, a really, really smart horse and one that he thinks an enormous amount of. She's not always been the easiest. No, you know, she's had some great results, I think, this year. Um, she won two, three stars She's won this two, year. three stars, one at Wellington and one at Barbary Castle as well. And actually, I think stepping down slightly and uh, just really having a lot of fun has been very good for her. Yeah, lovely shape over the triple bar there. And Alex was able to move up to the double really well. And you know, did a great job there. And it's lovely when you're sat on a, a nice, careful horse like uh, like Quindiva, it seems to be. And, um, it, you know, sort of, he always gives you that bit more confidence to actually sit there and ride as you should do, rather than trying to protect, protect the horses too much. And I think that was a yeah, really lovely, classy round. And you can see how pleased Alex is, and you know, as, as he should be, really. And I think just 0.4 of a time fault. He will be very cross with that time fault. Doesn't actually cost him on the leaderboard at this stage. 35.0 will be the score that he uh, takes forward. So it's second behind Gemma Stevens. And uh, he's always loved performing to a crowd, Alex. He uh, is a great showman. He's a great ambassador for our sport. As uh, next to come forward is Gubby Leach. Gubby comes forward with Royal Harvest, owned by Sarah and Jonathan Houston. 34.2, their score coming forward. So sitting just outside the top 10 in 12th. Uh, David, you're going to dash off, but thank you so much for all of your That's insight better. today. Much appreciated.
And this horse that was so, so impressive here yesterday was absolutely brilliant across the country. And actually, Gubby was inside the time, even with a long route. Um, the horse that won the long format three star at Hartbury last year, jumping clear on the final day on that occasion. As Tina Cook sits down alongside me. Tina, good to have you back. Good to be back. I've turned up just at the right time when all the action's happening now. I've been watching actually out there live and uh, there's a really great atmosphere around the arena. And being with the sponsor's tent, they've been having lovely lunch and then seeing all these action of these fabulous horses that are going around. And Gubby had a magical ride yesterday. This horse, so quick. And to have a horse that can cover the ground and, and be so quick between the fences yesterday has made his life and it's so much easier and has come out full of beans today. He was one of those that finished yesterday. Very clever footwork in the double there. Um, just backed himself off. He, yesterday, he could have carried on. If that had been a 12-minute track, the horse would have lapped it up. And you can really just see that the way the horse is jumping, he's just now coming to the last... Gubby sitting still and the horse just gave that feet all the way around and you know he hasn't come out like a tired horse when going so quickly yesterday Gubby had got him very fit but galloping was easy for him so then he's come out sharp with his feet sharp with his brain and yeah great result for Gubby he's been working really really hard over the years got a fantastic bunch of owners and some lovely horses and that horse is seriously exciting. It really is, and it means so much to them all. So, uh, Gubby Leach, 34.2. That is uh, his final score, and he will finish at worst just outside the top 12. Now it is the turn of Ireland, and is it power with uh, Terry Miller's Senza Fine? This is an 11-year-old by Lakota, and a combination, actually, who come forward on a score of 34. Is it who has done a lot of pure show jumping herself? And this horse, a new ride for her, actually, Back end of last year was produced by Tim and Janelle Price. Not always the easiest, and so Izib had her very much with a view to seeing whether she wanted to do some show jumping or pursue the eventing, and actually she's really come out, and I saw Izib this morning, and this mare actually grew up a huge amount yesterday. It felt like a real step forward in their partnership. So this is an exciting combination for Team Ireland for the future. And is a very competitive, always has been, always will be. And this mare has a super technique over a fence. She's naturally very sharp, very good at getting her knees up and is of keeping the the pace up round the corners. And the mare just needs to be held together, but is a using her body to, to sit behind the mare so that she's her balance is in the right place because she's naturally a very enthusiastic horse very powerful in her canter has got a super hind leg really bends her hocks and brings her hind leg right underneath her so you know she's got plenty of scope plenty of jump and just controlling that enthusiasm when she's just running down oh. that distance and there there's a hat to hold her off the front rail and the mare just was too quick to land so that was really annoying because it's a really really good jumper Drops her a couple of places on the lead ball, but stays inside the top 15. Is it power? Clears the last, and she'll be frustrated with that pull down. But what an exciting uh, pair for the future for Ireland. 38.0 is uh, her total score, and that sees her go uh, into third on fourth on the live leaderboard. The uh, one, two, three at the moment is Gemma Stevens, 29.7. Gubby Leach, 34.2. Alex Bragg on 35. So uh, reverse order. Show jumping means that all can change. Now it is the turn of Tom Jackson into the top 10 here. Ian and Anne Slater's Farnden, 12-year-old by Hemingway. Three seconds over the time yesterday. Tom, who completed here on this horse 12 months ago, very much wanted to come back and be competitive this time. And Tom now been having plenty of experience of, of jumping under this sort of pressure where clear rounds are essential to be winning the prizes as he rode round Burley and finished second the other day and just shows what he can do and that he's a cool cool customer he's got some fabulous horses coming through and this just one of them he's a big horse naturally just sticks his head up but 
for some horses, you need them to be comfortable and that's the way that the horse wants to be. Tom's keeping him in a really nice rhythm so that the horse is happy and not fighting him. And it's that compromise as a rider. Yes, you'd like them to stay a little bit rounder and softer through their backs, but this horse likes to open up his frame as, as he approaches the fence. And that seems to be working because he is a big horse and some of these distances, he doesn't want to be going too fast because it's harder for them to shorten up. And there, Tom was very subtly trying to ask him to settle. The horse was biting him a little bit, but Tom rode him with a very soft man, a soft way and soft in his hand. Doing a great job. Come on, just the last. Oh, and the last goes. Tom Jackson, you could just see the big exhale. And uh, Farndon adds uh, four penalties uh, to his score. So uh, 34 point, uh, 36.1 will be his total score, 36.1. That will see him drop uh, a couple of places on the leaderboard. And uh, actually will just go behind uh, Gubby Leach and behind Alex Bragg. So uh, next uh, to come forwards. It is the turn of the 2019 Burley winners. Pippa Funnel with uh, Jane and Jonathan Clark's MGH Grafton Street. 14 year old by OPOS Quality. Pippa, quick salute to our ground jury, Bobby Stevenson. Sue Baxter and Douglas Hibbert. And even with all of Pippa's experience and skill in this show jumping phase, this horse has been tricky. She's put in a huge amount of work. Andrew Nicholson started him off and, and got him pretty well up through the grades. But Pippa has had to really work on this. He's a big striding horse. The OBS Qualities horses have a lot of ability, a lot of jump. But in their ride ability, find it a little bit difficult to shorten up. And this horse has found that difficult. But Pippa is doing so much jumping. And that's what really, really helps as an event rider that you can come in the ring and ride them. She can't just be a passenger with this horse, but that was annoying. She got him round the corner and he just was a little bit disrespectful of that front rail. And there, just had to move down the distance and then just took it off behind so he's had two down now that is going to drop her down a long way and i can just see the expression of disappointment on her because it's not like this horse can't jump a big fence he can but sometimes when they're so brave cross country that he's like well this is just little fences and there again sat on that oxer behind she got a few time faults with him yesterday. She said she was en almost enjoying the ride too much and really wanted to come out and prove that he is a good horse, but to really go and drop those rails now is very, very frustrating in what he has done in the past. Well, she sneaks inside the time allowed, but Pippa Funnel, three down, so 12 jumping for her, and uh, that will see her finish on a... Uh, Penalty score of 43.5 drops her well outside the top 10 into 18th on the leaderboard. So we are into the top 10 now and uh, the clubhouse leader is 29.7. Gemma Stevens, Flash Cooley. And uh, now anybody that jumps a clear round inside the time will take over at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, Lizzie Boff comes forward on her first run at this level of competition with her own B exclusive, a 12 year old by Bazaars exclusive. Well, absolutely brilliant with a clear round inside the time yesterday, 29.6. Can't afford a fence, can't afford to be even a second over the time. And Lizzie really showed her, her skill and her nerve yesterday uh, to to be inside the time, there were some very experienced riders that couldn't manage to do that. So she showed her youth, but also her skill to, to do that. And that's a fantastic start to this level to be able to perform that. And she's come in here. She's in a very nice rhythm. She sits very elegantly, very quietly. And this horse so far, they have got into a very nice rhythm together. She's giving him time. 
to jump and that distance that Pippa Funnel just had to move down there this horse made that distance very easy so she could sit nice and quietly he looks like he can maybe get a little bit strong she's riding him in a Pelham bit which the horse likes and it's a case of trying lots of different things with different horses and she's able to sit quietly with him and he's looking very sprightly after going inside the time you know it's a real art for riders and the, and the support team to to let the horses have enough sleep overnight but not let them get too stiff in their muscles and it's showing with this horse and this rider that this is a proper good job they've done she made a little bit of a turn but gave the horse a chance to jump it so that is a very very good result from a young rider just the most agonising of time penalties which actually just drop her below Gemma Stevens and Flash Cooley but top 10 in your first four star long format is some results that is some results and she just felt the need just to balance him to go and jump the last and even though as frustrating as it is to be over the time I like the way that she did that you know she rode that horse she wasn't just a passenger and she rode him in such a soft way and I think what a what a lovely rider and that she showed all her ability and her nerve and you know you can get into that arena and suddenly ride your horse in a very different way and she did a super job absolutely well next to go it is the turn of felicity collins with vicky collins and avrina milton's rsh contendor 29.5 is their score that they come forwards on in sixth place after the first two phases, so all to play for here. And this horse would be, on equa ratings as numbers, one of the best jumpers in the field. Has quite a phenomenal record in this phase. But as of course, can, as you it's can tough. see, yes. as he just jumped that oxer, you know, and really plenty of spring. He was neat in front and really flicked his back end away. It means that he's very supple in his back. He just touched the first part of that combination and there was absolutely no way he was touching the second two piece parts. It was almost like, oh God, no, can't be doing that. And that's a great feeling when you are a rider that you never really know how they're going to come it out on the last day after being competitive cross country going fast and is the horse going to really come out and respect those fences and when they do that and give you that feeling of air there is nothing better Felicity again has been through the junior young rider system got a fantastic brain real worker rides lots of different horses oh did you see that way the horse just did that little skip as it just balanced itself through that double and had the decency to have the respect to leave the fences up. It's really looking what it's doing. And Felicity's holding him together for this dreaded last fence. And she's done it. So that's a great round. She's really pleased with that. And after the disappointment of Burley, this is a big deal to come here and get a really, really high placing. It is. And do you know what? It, it's a, a real resilience building time because it's so heartbreaking when your first Burley doesn't go to plan. But actually regrouping very quickly at replanning and 29.5, she will be sixth or better. The one, two, three, Felicity Collins, 29.5. Gemma Stevens, Flash Cooley, 29.7. Lizzie Boff, be exclusive, 30. Five combinations left to go. And the first of those is uh, Bubby Upton with Cheddington Estates at Jefferson 18 on a score of 29.0. Were brilliant yesterday with a clear round two seconds inside the time cross country, the horse's first run at the level. And this has been quite difficult for Bubby. It's a great opportunity to be taking on Christopher Burton's horses, but to take on horses that have already proved themselves at this top level, it's a big ask to get to know. And every rider has a different way of riding, a different way of training their horses. This horse obviously has a lot of natural ability. He's getting very high over his fences, almost dwelling nearly a bit too much. So Bobby just needs to just keep the forward momentum that they don't accidentally take a back rail away. But she's having to get to know these horses and, you know, she's a rider that's competitive. She's been to Burley and unfortunately, Vercola had some few fences down on the last day. So she's had that feeling of disappointment when the last phase doesn't go so well. But that's all part of the process of becoming 
an international rider. Interestingly, the second half of this round, she's really up the tempo slightly. She's definitely sort of taken a little look at the clock and thought, no, got to keep moving here. Yeah, exactly. And and she's felt he really dwelt over the first few fences, so she's needed to keep moving. She would have watched enough rounds to realise there isn't time to be enjoying yourself too much. Just the one to go. She can be one second over the time and still hold her position, but nothing more. Bubby Upton looks at the clock. She punches the air, so she uh, seems pretty happy with that. And she will be uh, fifth or better. Bubby Upton, Jefferson at 18, take over at the top of the table. And actually, they are within a pole of the podium as well. So uh, lots to look forward to. But Bubby Upton, 29.0, the new leader here. As we head into the final four, Dirk Schrader, Casino 80, owned by Frere Reithmeyer, 12-year-old by Casillas, on a score of 29.0, but Dirk by uh, Fortune, Fortune slash Incredible Skill, finishing on the optimum time yesterday, sees him hold the uh, higher placing than Bubby. I was talking to Bubby this morning and she said that she was actually at the finish when Dirk went inside or dot on the optimum time and she, she said I didn't even try and match it because I wasn't risking going letting the clock tick one second over. Dirk would definitely... Dirk is a real character, a real competitor, a real character, absolutely loves the sport, produced so many horses, but he'll pretend that he knew exactly when he had to be crossing that line. I think he did. I think he did. <laughs> I think he it was a real piece of skill and a bit of a gamble because you, that is the risk you, you pay, isn't it? If ultimately the time does just tick a fraction of a second over. You could look the biggest fool, yes. but at the moment he's quite smug. Absolutely. But, but he's only going to be smug if he leaves these fences up as Bubby has now put the pressure on him. So the... Its tables have turned. The pressure is now on Dirk to get this lovely horse. And he's a really beautiful horse. Yes, a beautiful grey, but also as a type. Um, he looks athletic. He looks a lovely horse to ride and has come out looking like there's plenty of spring in that step. He jumped clear round on the final day to take the oh that that stayed to stayed to take the German national championship reserve title. Finished second to Michael Young. It Le Moulin and the Le Moulin show jumping is renowned for being very very big and square. So Dirk Schrader comes to the final fence with Casino 80, and he is the one to beat. His first visit to Blenheim. It's hard to believe he has been such a stalwart of our sport for so many years. But Germany go to the top of the table. It was 2016 that we last saw a German winner here. That was Bettina Hoy and Signor Medicot. Will we see another in 2022? We're into the top three. Sarah Bullimore. Rather impressive salute to our ground jury. That was. That was very purposeful. She means business. She knows that this horse is a very, very good jumper. She knows that Dirk has just gone clear. But when you're counting around, yes, you know what the person has done. But at the end of it, it doesn't matter if they've gone clear or had five down. You still want to go in there and jump a clear round. And this horse is one of the best jumpers on the circuit. He might be little, but he has plenty of spring in his step. So Sarah's got, got to get him round. He's quite spooky. And you sort of think, well, why is a horse still spooky when they've been at, the, at this level of competition? But they're just naturally oh, bright. Oh, and oh tight, my Sarah. goodness, she very nearly fell off. Um, thank goodness that tight and just landed on that back rail. That, it just shows with this sport, you really don't know. There was I preaching on and saying what an amazing jumper he is, which he is. He was almost jumping too easily. Um, he, he jumped through the first two parts of the combination beautifully and he absolutely wasn't going to give the water tray any uh, chance of touching it at all. One pull down keeps her in the top ten any more and it starts to get, it's already expensive, but very expensive. Dirk Schrader guarantees himself a podium finish. Yeah, Sarah will be mortified, but don't go and have any more mistakes. She got a little bit close to that triple bar but that does mean that she can then ride onto the combination. And luckily this horse is able to adjust just to shorten. 
She's still got to think about leaving these last few fences up and keep the forward momentum. She's been slow enough around the corners. Be very interesting to see it on the clock. Respect the last. Lovely clear out, clear over the last, but not a clear round for Sarah, unfortunately. One pole down for Sarah. Bullimore sees her drop down the leaderboard. She will go into eighth as things stand. And uh, or she will be no worse than eighth, I should say. 31.8, her total scale, score. Dirk Schrader and uh, Casino 80 are the ones to beat. And actually, we've just got two left to jump. Uh, Gemma Stevens is within a rail of Dirk Schrader. So if Gemma has a rail, Dirk Schrader moves to the top of the leaderboard and there will be a guaranteed German winner here this year. Gemma, though, already guaranteed uh, a top six finish with Flash Cooley. She's been in here. She's jumped one clear round. Jalapeno. The mare on whom she jumped clear 12 months ago for a top 10 finish. But uh, now holding my breath, after seeing Sarah Bullimore and Kuroi having that fence down, any horse can have a fence down. You know, however good a jumper they are, Gemma does a lot of show jumping now, jumping fences <coughs> that are twice the size of these here. But when you come into the ring on an event horse to leave those fences up, after what they did the day before... You can never be guaranteed a clear round ever, which makes eventing so exciting to the very, very end, as it has just shown. Oh, goodness me, and it's just had the back rail. Just as she was going towards the collecting ring, the mare just finished her jump a little bit too soon. Now it's just got a little bit flat, and Gemma's got to just calm her down. It's difficult, isn't it? They can get a bit upset when they hit one want to knock them but actually still a long way to go get through this double this is quite a short distance through there oh she gave it a rub but it's still there you just mustn't show as a rider when you know you've had a mistake don't get too tight in your arm just think about each fence don't let the horse know that you're getting tense and you come to this last fence Gemma was off it and the mare jumped it very easily how frustrating one fence down for Gemma Tattersall and Jalapino. So one down for Gemma Stevens. Uh, 30.3 will be her total score, which means that we have a German winner here. For the first time since 2016, there will be a German flag at the top of the leaderboard. The question is, will it belong to Dirk Schrader or will it belong to this young lady? Marlin hansen Hotop? who has led from the very first phase for owner Bode Lipson, Carlitos Quidditch K, on a score of 24.6. And she has a rail in hand. She can have a pole down and still take the win. She can't have two. She's come over here with Dirk Schrader. It would be a, I was going to say, a really happy lorry going home, but there'd be a bit of friendly competition in there as well, I am sure. No, it is been an enormous week for this young lady she's been top 20 at Buccalo this a horse that is more than capable of producing a clear round but this by far the biggest test of their careers and you can just see the horse is quite bright in its way of going he's big and scopy and you can see why she did such an amazing dressage test because this horse would have absolutely floated around or did float around at dressage arena but just need to stay calm and control all that power but as much as she wants to win it as you quite rightly said it's going to be an interesting journey home i'm sure there'll be plenty of banter as there has been all week you know they made the big deal to come over here and they've made the right decision so far this horse got a big jump and it's quite easy for him. She's just having to keep moving him around the corner. And we've seen so many different types of horses here, from the little Kurue to the big striding power machine of this horse. They do a lot of show jumping in Germany with their event horses. Mostly on surfaces nowadays. So actually it's quite to be on grass, but the surface in this arena has been so consistent. And how clever for a big, scopy, rangy horse, because that distance really does come up short. 
So she comes to the final fence. Marlin Hansen, Hotop, Carlitos Quidditch K have taken the title here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials brought to you by the Jockey Club. She's got a little bit of time, but that doesn't matter. She could afford it. And what a fairy tale story that is. They have led from the front. And uh, after the disappointment of not going to the World Championships for Team Germany, it is a third international victory for Marlin Hansen Hotop. And how exciting for the future! And what a feeling, Tina! Oh, totally! And you can just see what a beaming smile she's got. She's so proud of her horse, and and you can see he's not totally straightforward. He is well aware that the the crowds there are clapping and supporting, supporting him, and really appreciating what they have done here today. Yeah, you would on home turf love a British winner, but a German winner. You know, you have to give full credit to them and she's absolutely deserved it. She's led from the front, stayed at the front. She's had all that pressure all week. And you, as you can see, the crowd are really clapping and supporting her and the groom and support staff all around. And wait and see Dirk coming over <laughs> in a minute <laughs> to say, well, Dana, well, it's paid for the journey home anyway. I tell you what, it wouldn't be uh, if they were coming over. They'd have quite happily taken the one, too. There'd have been a bit of discussion as to which way round it was going to be. But uh, this is how it shakes up. Marlin Hansen, Hotop, Carlitos Quidditch K top the podium with their best international finishing score to date. Ahead of uh, compatriot Dirk Schrader, Casino 80 actually take the higher position in second because he finished spot on the optimum time. Bobby Upton, that little bit quicker cross country, also on the same score, will take third with Jefferson 18. Felicity Collins uh, will be delighted with fourth and RSH contendor, a personal best finishing score for her at the level. Gemma Stevens, Flash Cooley, at the first of Gemma's two rides inside the top 10. A four-star long debut for Lizzie Boff and B-Exclusive, finishing on a score of 30 to take sixth. Uh, Sarah Bullimore Coraway, that rail down will haunt her a little bit, but my goodness, what a horse. Gubby Leach, a top 10 finish with Royal Harvest, the most incredible performance in all phases. And Alex Bragg, Quinn Diva, rounding out the top 10. A little bit further on, uh, Tom Jackson, Farndon, finishing just outside the top 10. Is it power sends a fine? for Ireland and uh, our third German combination Nikolai Aldinger Timo in 15th Georgie Goss for loop uh, finish out the top 20 48.2 but my goodness what a weekend of sport we have enjoyed uh, Tina Cook sat alongside me Tina a brilliant performance and I have to admit masterclass in all three phases from our winner you know, and that's what's so exciting about our sport she has come out there she's had the pressure Everybody else has tried to overtake her and trying to outrun her, but she's kept her nerve right to the very end. And a young girl making a name for herself. She absolutely is. Marlin Hansen Hotop. Remember that young lady's name because I'm sure we'll see a huge amount of her in the future. From us, though, here at the Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, brought to you by the Jockey Club, an enormous thank you to all of our partners, to His Grace, the Duke of Marlborough, for hosting us here at Blenheim Palace, and, of course, everybody who has been watching along at home. We hope you've enjoyed it all, and we will look forward to seeing you back again in... 2023. Apparently, we're not hosting it. We're not. No, no. I'll, I'll... And if you would like to stay on to watch the prize giving, then you absolutely can do so. Uh, from us, though, it is a very, very big thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>